switch it over to the game? Yes, we should. Admin set, go. Yes, Markolov. We're ready for it. Second round coming up. It is going to be armor and a couple of pistols. Simple. Doesn't need armor. He just has his deagle. It's fine with him. Can I just point out that they have Simplevic and Hikovic, who is uh, clearly picking up on his Ukrainian to join the team full time. HLTV confirmed. Adding Vich to everything is just something you do, isn't it? To make it sound like you're speaking Ukrainian or Russian or something like that. Yeah, so I, would say it's Scandin or Scandin I was going to say Scandinavian. That's CIS region. That yeah. I don't know if it actually is a, like a proper ending to anything. But regardless, NIP not showing too much respect here. In fact, not a single, uh, you know, proper rifle. Got a Max 7 here, two MP7s and two UMPs. So NIP, they're in it for the money. Um, just trying to get as much into the bank account as they possibly can in this round, and it looks like they might be able to as well. Well, Exist actually getting a kill with the one thing they had that wasn't going to give them that much of a bonus, and there's Exist going down. Markolov punishing him. Freiburg picking up two kills before he's going to fall in. Forrest has to be a little bit careful here. He's actually, Gerard's going to end up going down, and now we're in a 2v2. It's UMP Max 7 versus UMP and MP7, and all of them have armor with about 25 seconds left. Wait, oh, they could have run right into B, but I'm not sure they're realizing this is a very disjointed round from flip side. They're going to make their way back, and this is a big problem. If you run from top banana into A, you're going to take around 17 seconds, and I think he had around 19 seconds, so he's going to have almost no time if, in fact, almost... Uh, they might have to pass the bomb. They might have to pass it. They're, he's just going to get there, but he's going to pull it. He's not going to get it. He's late. He's what late. He doesn't have this. Doing, There's no way he has it, and IP win the round. That's crazy. They had both sites open in the middle of that rotation. But he could have planted it in front. If he had yeah. just run in, he would have had the round. There is no need to run into the bomb site. I don't know what that was. I, I mean, considering that guy's praised for being fairly sufficient in those type of situations, that was rather lack composure there. That was crazy. My mind is actually blown. That was a, that was a huge giveaway from Flipside, obviously. That bomb plant would have helped them a lot. And the retake from uh, that, NIP would have been difficult. Yeah, I mean, not, not only helped them economically, they could have won that round. They had a yeah. two versus two where they had to go for a full retake. They were already committed on the B. That's a long rotation alone. Like you said, 17 seconds to go down banana. It's about the same to go through CT. Yeah. That's a lot of bomb time already gone right there. Plus, you picked up weapons. It's a fairly even situation at that point. All right, then. Well, third round is coming up. And flip side, at least they got to save the, the guns that they have here. And they had better make great use of them because they didn't get any kind of bonus for losing that round. So two of the members, Bonding and Markolov, are going to be... Well, I think Blade is one of them. They're going to be... I think Markolov and Blade there, they're going to be very low on money here. If they die, they won't be able to buy with the rest of the team in the upcoming fourth round. Molotov into Force Exist out from underneath the canopy. And he's on about half health. Follow up flashbang and get right. Going to go for it with the UMP taking down one. And he just sprays down a whole uh, lineup there of flip side players. It's going to be simple left with a deagle, and he should be going down. Yeah, it should be indeed 7 HP. And they're, they're on both sides of him. So now we'll see the guns come out from flip side again, though. Not getting that bomb tamp down in the second round limits how much they really still have to work with. In fact, due to that force on the second round, uh, this is staggered. Hardly any utilities. The Tech 9 out from Arkalov. We're going to have Galil for Blade, and he can't even. Well, okay, he's got 1050. What is he going to grab? He's. Gonna grab nothing. Okay, there it is, the smoke. I was gonna say, he needs at least utilities. So we'll see how they break this out of spawn. Fairly standard for Menopave. Actually, a bit of a B boost right, or a stack, excuse me, right now. Is this gonna work down with that P90 to get up close? As he also has Get Right and Freiburg. No surprise, lethal combination on the B site. But it's Bondic to open up the kill as he takes down Forrest with the AK. Alu's now got to be careful. He's flashing that smoke, but he counter flashes it. He may have bought himself some time, but they're right behind him. Have they gone around him? They haven't. They're basically holding hands. Him and Blade are side by side if they only knew, and now it's actually going to be Blade that goes back the other direction, so he doesn't even want to take the fight. That might allow Alu to push through late and get behind them, and that's what he's looking to do, but he gets both. going to get the third he does. Well played by Alu to bide the time for himself. Wow, and exists to pick up that kill on Markolov, which is going to leave Bondic alone. This is an unreal round. There's no way any of that should have happened. Exists will go down. Alu looking for the quad kill here to try and see if he can actually win the round. Single-handedly takes down Bondic. And it's going to be NIP winning that round in spite of some pretty stacked odds against them. If you're in that smoke, I mean, if you come out with an M4A4, you had a lot of bullets left in there, maybe it could work an AK or something. You come out with an MP7, you sh you're not going to be feeling too confident, really. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's nuts. And the fact that Blade was looking that direction like for like a good three seconds of that smoke time and then just decides, nah, never mind, let's go the other way. And he just stabs them in the back. Like, 
Talk about Lady Luck being on your side in that situation for Alu, because they could have easily yeah. wrapped on him and he could have been overwhelmed fast. In my mind, I imagine that as they were standing still in the smoke, the Twitch chat was just spamming bot Alu, bot Alu, and then when he comes out, it just changes to God Alu, God Alu, God Alu. <laughs> you know, <laughs> instant change there. I know what you're up to, Twitch chat. Are you calling them fickle? I know. It's a, it's a cultural thing now. It's got this, you know, it's, it's got its own ecosystem. Someone's about to, to write a book on it. Fair enough. Well, smoke's out high on B. It goes a little bit deeper, so it won't get flip side much more to work with. In fact, they're just gathering inside middle, 4 nothing NIP. Gun's still out, though. Due to that bomb plant in the last round, they managed to get actually more AKs out in this round, but we'll see how they choose to use them, because so far, Nip not really giving them anything to work with. You know, I'd like to see him from Hiko. I mean, Hiko had kind of a slow start in some of the games yesterday, but it seemed like once he let himself go and just like really stopped uh, worrying about what the rest of Flipside were doing and just looked for entries, he did a lot better. So I'd love to see Hiko just play a little bit more loosely right now and try and find the openings himself, basically. Alu, I think, hasn't even died yet in this game. I think he's 7-1-0 and oh right now. So he's going to look for a couple more kills. Exist, in fact, picking up Markolov and... As beginnings go, this is working out really well for NIP at the moment. Even if Forest and Exist are a little bit low, Alu pick up another kill there on Bondic, and now things look very bad for Flipside. If they lose this round, they won't have that much money, especially if they don't get the bomb down. But at least they take out Alu. Yeah, having Alu down is a bit of a bonus to work with, and now Exist dropping as well. So Blade picking up two. Reading is the round fairly even, in fact, even if you include the HP, he goes a little bit less than Freiburg, but Forest not much different off than Blade. And Simple's gone down as is Blade, so NIP holding well with this crossfire. In fact, time to expire. Hiko can't do anything, so they talked about the clutch. You don't really give him the time to do it. He's not going to. Not at all. And that's going to put us into the sixth round. No bomb plant, but they are still going to buy up. They've got the one acre on Hiko that was saved and two more Galils. Simple. Yeah, he's going to have an AK as well, so not the worst buy, really. Um, they can make this work, but now Alu's got the AWP, and that's going to give them so much map control, unless Flipside are going to try and somehow get rid of him, but they don't really have the grenade to try and smoke him off, and Alu's going to pick up a kill while Forrest is pushing middle right into Bondic, who picks up that kill. So a swift one-for-one -one trade, and Flipside are going to be all right with this situation, I think. Yeah, they could be in a decent spot here. Another smoke to come up for Hiko, but he tries to shoot in transition. Actually does good damage to get right, but he still manages to fall back inside the site. So Freiburg, he'll stay forward. Get right's there to support with the flash. Bomb still waiting in mid. No over rotation, one arch. One passive back by Pit. That's a bit of a switch up play actually for Alu with the off. He's going to go very passive and default inside the site. They're looking for Higo to actually play the entry role right now on B, which is a bit interesting. It's less so of a lurk. It's more get him in front. Simple's going to stack with him. Yeah, I think that's, what the, that's a bit what they were doing yesterday, and it seemed to work quite well. So I, I, I'd like to see them continue to do that. Freiburg, though, is holding inside the site. One of the few players left, by the way, as you can tell, is still using the M4A4 instead of the M4A1. I think like Freiburg's pretty much the only one at this point who still does it. So um, we'll see if he's going to be able to use it. Molotov's reigning in the fish, they're all being cooked inside that fountain. It's made Freiburg very angry. He's going to come out, get the kill on Hiko straight away. Trying to touch my fish. Still got 19 bullets left, and he's going to take down Simple, and he's on a rampage. Triple kill, almost a quad. He's going to pull out the pistol, and finally goes down to Markolov now. 11 health left here on the Ukrainian player. He's going to be dropped by Alu. Five seconds left on the round as well. A 6-0 lead right now for NIP. Remind me never to go up for seafood with Freiburg, ever. <laughs> if I even look at him the wrong way, he's going to just M4 me in the head, along with anyone who's with me walking into that direction. He watched Finding Neo and took it very seriously. Apparently. Apparently. Poor guy. That's a, that's a great movie, by the way. I have to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm Strange, a strangely, I, w I was also, you know, I was sort of you know, following the, the storyline. I was like, all right, see where this is going. No, I just, I'm just agreeing with you. It's a great movie. I'm done with the storyline. I'm just going to go with it. But nonetheless... <laughs> Forrest <laughs> is going to get inside apartments as exists that opens it up because it is an eco right now for flip side. So not a lot to work with. Tech 9 that Simple had has been dropped. No one's gone back to recover it. The rest are on the P250s. It looks like they want to head toward the A site. They do have a lurk inside the patio section down below. That's Forrest. He's not really, I, I called him a lurk, but it looked like he was going to push more forward than he did and try and get behind Boiler. Instead, he just waits for them to come to him, and that's the right call. He gets two for it. Blade and Markolov. Both go down. Bombs drop down at the top of Alt Mid. We saw that on the way by, and they might not even have time to go back to get it because Alu's collected Hiko. 
Crosshair is aimed in the right direction to find Bondic, but he's got the smoke to cover him coming out through the doorway. But as he walks forward with the Tech 9, Alan missing a shot might go down here, and that drops the op. And if there's going to be another whiff here from Freiburg, it could have got really interesting in terms of economy. But Freiburg gets the kill, and 7 0. Things are definitely massively spiraling out of control for Flipside right now. Yeah, and it's Alu doing the carrying here, in spite of the fact that, I mean, everyone on IP is doing pretty well, but Alu at 11 2 and 2 is definitely very well uh, off to start with. So, 7 and 0, 8th round coming up, and. There is finally an AWP on Simple. Let's see if he can stop. Um, if he can stop Alu here. All right, now it's not going to be working out so well. Bondit going down, so Alu gets the opening frag. He takes a lot of damage for it, but that's fine. Now they can afford to play a lot more defensively, and Flipside are going to have to probably take some sort of risk here to try and bring it back. Molotov in the back, but not going to be touching Freiburg. Yeah, that gives him a lot of space because he's not playing directly inside the corner where that was intended to land. He might move in after it extinguishes and actually going to re-smoke. So NIP is actually using their utilities quite well. I almost think that Flipside need to switch to more of a Navi approach rather than try and play these picks early. Maybe try and bait out the utilities from NIP and then have a clear sight on entry because so far all of their initial p pushes have been just shut down before they even get in a position to get kills. So Tico to try and flash back around the corner. They'll go for the crossfire just to check out what's going on today because, again, they haven't gotten anywhere. And Tico actually, meanwhile, back over. Okay, this is the call. They get that one kill and look at them. They all just turn and run back. They want to take this side. It's Get Right that's holding now because Freiburg's the one to drop. And it was Freiburg last round that completely annihilated them. It's going to have to be Get Right this time. First one out. Second flash in by Water. That's going to force them in. And as they come through, they get blinded up again by Alu, who's rotated over early. They're all blind, but no one's gone down. Interestingly enough, it's just finally going to be Get Right to get the first kill about five seconds after the play transpired. And the Alu will come out, but there's Simple to respond. His op against Alus, and he gets the better, but now Get Right knows where he is. He's just going to bait him out, and he has the M4, so not much he can do. Up close, holds the spray, turns it to his side, and Blade walks out in the wrong direction. Wow, very well played indeed. Get Right with the triple kill there, and the Molotov timing as well, working out quite well. And um, also Alu showing up to help him out just as he was about to get sandwiched in that corner. Eight and zero, and moving into the ninth round, things definitely looking very good for NIP. I mean, flip side, if they had the right idea, I suppose, to get the opening frag over at the B bomb site, it might be time to just go, but they took a while because they were pretty far away from the bomb site. Gave NIP a bit more time to adjust to everything, and right now they just need to start collecting a bunch of rounds, otherwise, this is not going to be working out. Simple did win that, uh, that fight with Zalu eventually, I think, but it's not going to be quite enough. Exist will take down Simple to start it off in the cubby. Hasn't left either because there's no one in a, in a refrag position before us, burning alive Hiko. Gives Exist the chance to pop out on Blade. Markalov, meanwhile, does get the only kill. So a bit of salvation here as they are down two men, but Markalov's on 19 HP. And they've got no information on either site. In fact, even more so than that, here's Get Right popping out from Banana. And that's going to leave Bondic in a 1v4, and it's not a lot you can really get out of a round like this. Imagine... Hey, do you see that alert? I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Oh, I didn't see it. I don't know what you're talking about, Matthew. I've given up. You know, for historical reasons, it would be a lot better if, uh, if Simple were some Russia instead of Ukraine uh, fighting Alu. Because there's actually, do you realize this, that uh, the, the world record for most sniper kills in an actual war is held by a Finnish sniper who had the nickname the White Death? That's ironic, because I've never seen a Finnish opera do anything good. Oh, bought your, Alu. Your, your Twitter feed is going to be. Oh, yeah. Massive. No, my, my Twitter feed is going to explode after this game. Yeah, it's true. I think it's like 500 and something kills in one. Like, it was really? around, around the First World War, yeah. You know what's funny is, though, that like, the Americans went and made that American sniper movie. Obviously, the guy individually was like a crazy sniper. So you're saying the overall kills by multiple people. But like, he's the one that's going to be idolized now due to Hollywood. Let's make, yeah. let's, let's, can we patent this? That's America. Movie about? Have you seen the new American sniper movie? Yeah. Christ, I have never seen anything as awful as that in my whole life. Wasn't it Clint Eastwood who, like, Clint's yes. going to walk in here stone cold and just, like, that kick you? I, that's why I watched it. I watched it on the plane over, and about 20 minutes in, I thought, there's no way this is happening. This is so awful. And, but then that's I made up my mind. Facts. I thought, I'm going to keep watching. I will, I will watch just to spite them. And then... How does that, how does that spite them? That's like saying, your movie's awful. I'm not going to support it, but I'm going to support it anyway. I, I have to imagine that they, they weren't expecting people to really watch it. There's no way. There's no way that they could have expected people to watch that movie. This is a tactical pause, by the way. Oh, really? This is the first time all day, perhaps, that we do have a tactical pause. <laughs> it's going to be a tactical pause into a, like a technical pause as we, uh, some computer crashes. Don't jinx it. 
Just go with it. Just accept it. Well, NIP changing up the pace. They're kind of expecting probably Flipside are going to change it up. But Flipside are, in fact, ecoing here. So, I mean, that means the next round had better be huge. Exist looking for a kill. He did pick up one, but the rest of his team is there to pick it up in the end. So, Bondic, last man. He's crawling through the underpass. He's got a take nine. Great weapon for it. But, you know, as he peeks up here, there's going to be a lot of people waiting for him. And Allo to pick up the kill. 10 and 0. Oh. And we are moving into the 11th round with um, NIP just right now seemingly cruising right into the semifinals. Yeah, I remember when I said this could be an interesting game and there might be an upset, so I predicted 2-1. Yeah. I'd like to use a lifeline. <laughs> I kind of... I, I was going to I was gonna agree with you, but I think I never said anything, so I'll, now I'll just be like... <laughs> <laughs> Scapegoat. Yeah. I, th I honestly expected a lot more out of flip side, but obviously... I think the good news here is that we might be seeing like an NIP team that's at least a little bit better. Simple picking up the first kill with a very, very common boost looking over the smoke towards top banana, but they weren't ready for it. And Freiburg, who is usually the king of banana, ends up going down. So now it's Getright's turn to jump into that position as he works down into the arches. Simple, this is the first time they've had the opening frag on Flipside's side. In fact, now he's going to take down those flames, push through his own smoke, so he's got a bit of an angle here if Alu falls off the cubby, but they're actually falling away instead. He's, uh, is he going to work? Okay, interesting. I thought he was going to head over immediately to apartments, trying to get the pick for the uh, from apartments, but they've already got three players through into boilers, so this is pretty much going to be an A commit. The problem is, look at Get Right. He's already flashed through a bottom banana smoke. They know he's coming, but he's already found one, and he gets away with it. So now he's got information that they're stacked and made. He's got a first kill to equalize it, and now they can fall back and defend each site. Interesting that they're rotating very early, that Forrest is heading back over to A, though. Because yeah, but they I haven't gone all the way in. I actually think that's a very good idea because they've got to rush B right now. They'd have to check a lot of corners to try and get in there. So it, I think it is more likely the flip side we'd be pushing here at the moment. But 25 seconds, they are actually making their way back. And NIP, because they're holding so far back on the A-bomb side, they have no idea. So a lot of this is going to come down to get right in the corner. And backup is coming now. I think Forrest is rotating back again, but get right is still going to be alone. They've got, they've got a Molotov off of this back corner as well. He could end up being fired out. They line up and almost both could have gone down, but they will actually trade favorably. So now... The 2v3 here, Bomb has just put, been put down, and there is a kit on both the NIP players. Alu not going to switch up his weapon, just wants to walk in with the AWP out, and he's going to get shot in the face by Markolov. So now, Exist is alone and trying to spray like a crazy person, not going to be uh, connecting with anything. So finally, a round for flip side, and it was after a tactical pause as well. There you go. And it was after, after a pick from Simple as well to give them the early first blood. It was a nice play by Getright. We talked about it. Like, I thought that was pretty smart to get down through banana like that because no one had been there for a while. They hadn't committed to A, so there's, unless they're all inside boiler alt mid, he's, he's easily going to spot one. Yeah. And that's what happens. But it was a really smart call as well, I thought, by Blade to say go back over toward B, chase out, get right. You thought they would have to check a lot of corners, but by that over rotation, the passive hold on A, they had all the time in the world to execute. So it turned out in their favor completely. Yeah, I mean, it could have been a bit, a bit of a risk for them to go as fast as they would. Let's say NIP did actually have two players there and they were just setting up further back, but... Um well, I think it came off the call as well that Getright only saw two people, despite that yeah. there was four just around, like, in total there was four there inside mid. Yeah, but oh, either way, it works out really well for flip side. Now they kind of have to win the next four in a row. And I think even if they do, even if, the, if this ends 10-5, that's not going to be quite good enough for flip side on the terrorist side. But obviously, it'd be better than anything else at this point. Um, we're moving into the 12th round. 50 seconds left. Molotov up into the middle, try and buy a bit more time and do a little bit of damage as well. The flip side want this mid control. NIP are in fact out of grenades already at 40 seconds left. That's a bit sketchy. Exist gonna get the kill. Exist picking up a double kill, taking out Hiko as well. And Markolov falls first. So now Bondic finally with one return, but Alo is there to pick up the one there and Forrest with the kill on Blade. Simple last man standing in a 1v2. Or sorry, 1v4. It's even worse. It's a 1v simple though, right? Yeah. It could have no, been, never you mind. know. It's Freiburg. If there was someone to do it, it might have been simple, but I feel like on a map like Inferno, his impact is gonna be somewhat less so this leaves very little money for blade currently on 1600 but the rest of them are in a position to buy so it'll be interesting to see if they try and get one forced with a little drop to him but they're not they're actually going to go and he goes in a position where he could have did the money not update for simple after the hud it must not have because i could have sworn he had enough for an ak yeah well i don't i'm not sure alu gonna be taking up that kill onto blade and 
Exist pushing forward. So again, NIP feeling so confident that they are just going to be pushing up and being very aggressive here. Forest will go down, though, and Flipside actually countered the aggression in the middle with pushing out of apartments, which is a pretty good idea. Allo going to pick up one more kill, and now the whole of the NIP team is wrapping around towards this bomb side. Bomb is going to go down inside, and it's a 3v4 at the moment. NIP with a very, very decent chance of retaking this, because Flipside are also out of grenades, so they... Once this smoke clears, NIP are going to be able to make their way through, and they still have one smoke, one HE, a couple of flashbangs, and you can see they're all raining in at the moment. Hiko playing in the pit. Can they actually defend this? Freiburg gets to live another second. I think Hiko thought the gallery got the kill. Now he's in a 1v2, and there's already a guy in the bomb, and he can't stop it from this position. He's trying to get out, but he's going to get shot down by Get Right. So 12 and 1, and that is going to be the round for NIP, and that will reset Flip Science economy almost entirely. Luckily, they had a bit saved, but um, yeah, this is very, very bad for the uh, Ukrainian team. NIP just felt bad that we had all the delays today, so they thought they'd get their game over with quickly. I like the double smoke on pit, though. The one in front of truck, that allowed them to work up the alley, get directly inside the bomb site. They wrapped Exist in quickly, and then you said that they were out of smokes on uh, Nile. I was about to say Nile because of Hika, but flip side's perspective, when they dropped it out in front of library, so they put their own smoke a little bit deeper in front of graveyard. Again, they could get another route directly inside the bomb site. So even if they were playing around the proximity, on the perimeter of the bomb site, they, they were covered yeah. off completely. It was a really well, well executed retake from NIP in this round. Pretty straightforward as Alu picking up two up close and Forrest robs him of the third, but 13 1 now, last round of the half coming up. I don't think anyone was expecting this kind of stomp. You know, you've got Bondic who's been playing well and he is top fragging, so again, very consistent performance from him across the last couple of tournaments. And then you have Simple and Hiko who are supposed to be like the star players and they're actually at the bottom of the scoreboard. So, I mean, Normally, if, if Simple and Hiko are going to be playing their A game, then at least you'd win a couple of rounds. Every once in a while, someone would step up and get a good, you know, triple kill, and that would be enough. But it seems like NIP have just managed to shut them down entirely. And I don't know. There's no real answer here for Flipside currently. Last round of the half coming up here, and they've already taken a bit of damage. At least they get control of apartments, but that's usually manageable if you're on the terrorist side. We haven't seen, actually, Flipside get too much presence inside the apartments yet. The only round we did was actually the round when they, they came back over when Get Right pushed down mid, the round they won. But that was a B take in the end, so Simple's trying to work himself out. Now, they'll have seen that nade be thrown, because they do have Exist on the balcony, man. Down, Alu spots one through the flames. The Actually, flames take down Blade, so it works out to be a double, not necessarily both from him as Exist now gets his second kill on Simple, and an excellent shot from Alu looking for the last as Bondic pops out, having only got one kill so far. And it's 14 to 1 at half. I don't really know what to say about that. I feel like, I feel like it's hard to comment too much on a, round, on a half that ends 14-1. Um, NIP definitely bringing, uh, bringing their A game here, but also I think Flipside maybe, maybe struggling a bit much on, on Inferno. It, it, isn't the, it definitely isn't an easy map to play if you have a stand-in. I mean, a map like Dust 2 might be a little bit more forgiving if you're having a stand-in. So, um, yeah, Inferno... Proving to be difficult here for uh, for the flip side team. If they lose this pistol, we're gonna go straight into the second map after about what 20 minutes. Not straight. We still have another round after that, Anders. Don't get carried away. I I, I foresee multiple echoes in my future. <laughs> They'll draw it out. Tactical pause and uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe a couple of pieces. They will find. There will be a way for this game to go on all night. Let I'll me assure you. Take your word for it. There's a nice pop flash on Freiburg, and then a couple of people waiting in second mid, but Simple gets the first kill on Forest. Allo going to try and charge in here with the Glock in hand, but Flipside doing a really good job here falling back. This is some solid play coming out here from the CT side, and Simple with a stunning headshot to take down Alu. He's looking for more. He's got seven bullets left, but that aim punch is going to shut him down. Bondic to fall, and somehow we've ended up in a 2v3, and Get Right going to get that kill on Blade. NIP are bringing him back in spite of Simple doing so much so about his team and that shot to the face of Markolov is gonna be a little bit painful. He's almost taken down both their players. Markolov last man standing and Get Right just needs one click here and he's gonna be able to take out Markolov and also land himself a triple in the pistol. Oh, but Get Right, he actually missed that shot in the initial pass by by Markolov. It could have been over already, but Mark might have a bit of a chance. No, he's got no chance. He's looking for the burst shot. Get right, just toying with him at this point because there wouldn't have been time to defuse the bomb at that point anyway without a kit. So it's 15 to 1. Anders, I thought you said it ended right away if they won the pistol. Practically is. I'm, I'm going to call it. Admin, stop the game. Close it. <laughs> Anders, the colonel has spoken. <laughs> uh, Sorry, well. flip side. You lost your chance.
I mean... You had I, one job. The silver lining right now for Flipside is if they make this comeback into overtime, the whole NIP team is really just going to disband. You know, they've got, they've got the chance of actually breaking the team here. There's, that's the only silver lining I can think of. But really, NIP really close to a second map right here. Kiko missing a couple of shots, and now they're getting dangerously close. He's going to end up going down, but Markolov wow. is there. Double kill with the C set, 75. Not too bad at all. Just going to put it into a 3v3 at least. I foresee Eco's in my future. I said it. I'm a prophet. No, I'm not. That's a lie. They're probably not going to eco this because they're coming in and be with spades. They've already Molotov'd out on Emo. Smoke now as well for Ali. So he just has to turn back based on the call. There is a teammate in the back of the site. And they've gotten them both. Get right takes down Markolov. He was the one that was playing pest inside Emo. So Bondic, he's now truly Emo forever alone as he got one on three. Has a five seven. Looks towards get right. And that's it. 16 1 NIP dominant performance. They have not given up double digits at any map yet. Wow. I mean. 16 8, 16 4, 16 2, 16 1. Are you just, you're just throwing out numbers. You don't really know that, do you? That is what, what their group stages were. Wow. Some real preparation there, Sadie, because I'm impressed. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagined you were just trying to, just trying to lie, lie to me, just come up with random numbers and hope that I'd, I'd buy HLTV it. HLTV confirmed. All right, then. Well... Look at you, look at you. That's going to be the first map. Um, oh, you've got the suspenders. <laughs> what was, what was Vendetta's word? Suspendicus? Suspendicus. He's going to kill you for... He never got to say it on stream, so now it's like broken, but that was all Vendetta. Okay, we'll, we'll credit Vendetta for the excellent pun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we go into the next map, we're going to go to a commercial break and see if NIP afterwards are still going to be just as fired up. They were looking really, really hot. So we'll be back after a, you know, just a tiny, tiny break. Oh, she were right. Look at that. <laughs> it's going to be Mirage, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I was going to go first. I uh, know. I, I will just, I will keep quiet for the sake of everyone's, hey, I had everyone's careers. Go on. Uh, well, I only know 25 letters, but I don't know why. <laughs> That's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we're getting, so getting into it. This is a really fast <laughs> B push right now, and obviously the knife round's already happened. So as requested on Twitter, I cannot do the knife round speed casting, but it's going to be Hiko to open things up right now as they do continue to push on to this site. Hiko is falling off, so this is interesting. They put him in this solo spot on B, at least initially. I know it's the pistol round because look this will give this. him a decision to come out in clutch rounds late. But look at the entry from flip side. Yeah, that was a massive grenade by Hiko, and simple cleaning it up with a triple kill. What a big round here. Flip side, I mean, they're already getting as many rounds as they got on Inferno. I can't believe it. <laughs> you raise an excellent point. I, I think it's interesting to put Hiko in that position, though, because that's the, the sort of the least aggressed position, to, typically speaking. So yeah. now he'll be able to close that round. So he'll be able to come over late into the A side. It'll be interesting to see if that pays off or not. But I mean, if you're going to play one person solo somewhere, it's probably going to be the, the B bomb side because the other player is going to be playing on catwalk. That means, you know, the rest of flip side can be flip side. And Hiko can just be Hiko over at B-bomb side and, um, and relax for a while. So it does kind of make sense. If he was in the middle somewhere, he'd have to communicate a lot more with everyone else. And um, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to be an issue, isn't it? Blade with a good spray through the top of the smoke on Forest. And um, there is that scout on Get Right. Also, just a, a correction to the information that we were putting out earlier. We were trying to educate you, and it turns out we were not really educated ourselves. But it turned out that Finnish sniper is actually from World War II and not World War I, just to, to point I out. never said it, so you're just correcting yourself. I am. I'm I'll, perfect. I'll, I'll admit it. You are sitting, because <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Boost in the window, though. Blade's the one that's waiting with the FAMAS. Meanwhile, Get Right's got up on Catwalk. He's going to climb through the ladder, so they'll have a double aggression onto this position. And Get Right's already aimed in with the scout. Try and look for the angle. Get the man advantage back, or at least even it back up. Now, okay, now he'd still be just trying to claw away from the deficit at this point, because Bondix now found Alu, looks for the shot, and he doesn't even actually hit Blade on the second try. So he gets away with 29 HP, and they survive with five up. Well, it's going to be Markolov to get a kill on Get right there, which means Exist and Freiburg are going to be left alone. That grenade failing just a little bit. Hiko's still going to pick up the spray, and um, actually Blade will steal that second one, but almost a double there with the submachine gun. Steals a Tech-9 as well and puts us into the third round. NIP still without a bomb plant, and they're going to be playing this round with absolutely minimal investment. In fact, not a single pistol being purchased yet. Hmm. Bot Alley looks a little bit slow with the algorithm that time. <laughs> so it, it took him a while to get out of the spawn, but maybe it's for the best because his teammates are going to die before they get much further. A simple oh. just tapping away. This is ridiculous. Simple with four kills in mid. Markolov takes away the ace, but what a play from him with that gun. When you've only got a hammer all 
your problems start looking like nails. It doesn't matter what gun he has. <laughs> I'm like watching your face like, <laughs> is this real life? All, all I can think of are inappropriate jokes that I can't make on stream. You've no idea what kind of hell you're putting me in. <laughs> I will save them for later. Maybe I'll put them on Twitter. <laughs> it's going to be, it's gonna be a, a 5v5. I'll do the other one, though. You might have a face that only a mother can love, but you have a mother that everyone can love. <laughs> oh, it's wow. It's going to be a 3v4. You know, my parents thing. watch this stuff sometimes, right? <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> it's going to be alone in a 1v4. The bomb is lost in a bomb site. And flip side, you know, they're actually off to a very good start at the moment. Yeah, this is, this is really good for them. Mirage is typically a map that their T side is the thing that has to carry them due to a lackluster CT. So for them to get these early three rounds plus the first gun is actually going to look really well. So still a chance for them in this game. Obviously, a much better chance than what we saw on the previous map. And Markalov closes out on Get Right. So every gun goes down. Get Right doesn't even sit by and allow time to expire. It puts them right back onto pistols. We'll see how they want to respond because they have to win the next gun round if, before this gets out. I think if they don't win the next gun round, based on Flipside's T side, if they can get rolling with some momentum, there's a real chance for Flipside in this. I know that's an early call, but there's definitely a chance. Well, I mean, after the kind of loss that they took on Inferno, they're definitely they like this kind of start is definitely going to help them so much. And also put just a little, you know, a little bit of cool on their IP, make sure that they don't feel too confident continuing on here. Eco sees, and now he's actually switched it up to play in the middles. That's also a bit interesting. Maybe he was getting too bored over at the B bomb side and thought it's uh, time to go into mid instead. But he sees that uh, smoke going down and wants to put up a Molotov to just try and counter them a bit. Good grenade here on Freiburg, but. Again, NIP are playing without armor, except for Alwyn. Should be a fairly simple round here for a flip side. A simple round for flip side. Mm, yeah. And simple, as you say, that gets one kill. So, so far, it is a fairly simple round. One of the interesting aspects as well for them on this team is that normally their secondary opera primary, unless simple calls for himself, because he'll make the decision. But look at that hold with the Tech 9 as Hiko switches back over. They don't have their secondary opera, and oftentimes they do flirt with the double op setup on yeah. their CT on this map. So it's going to be interesting to see if that works or not, because you talked about simple changing it up, going back toward mid. He'll play from catwalk connector window. He doesn't care, but only when he has the support of that second op to make the decision. Yeah, I mean, even when they've traditionally, with them having a stand in on this team, they've had Cyberfocus playing instead. So then it's been, you know, World Edit and Cyberfocus doing the double op, or when simple here, it's simple and World Edit doing it. So you're right, they do, they do really like doing that. I mean, you know, in my dreams, they will just have Markolov doing the, the secondary orping. You're right, they actually could if they had to. Still believe, I still believe. Baby Markolov's at home cheering. Yeah, it, it can happen. You just have to have, you know, enough faith and it'll, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll all be good. Sixth round is coming up right now and um, NIP, they're not under like a, an incredible amount of pressure right now, but it'd be sweet if they can just get a round in here Start to um, start to connect the dots and see where the weakness is in Flipside's defense. And um, smoke here going to be for middle. Exist putting that one up, and yeah, that's going to be right on in there. While the rest of them rotating towards the B bomb side, and um, it's going to be Hiko again back at B with the M4. He's got a Molotov, so he's jumping down there towards the truck. If he sees them coming, he can stop them, and um, that should give enough time for everyone else to rotate on in. So the B bombs that's not going to be easy to hit right now, especially if they're doing it. Uh, a little bit later in the round as they are now. Simple's just waiting for Get Right to push through from underpass, but eventually gets a little bit impatient, has to check back toward window. Now he's going to actually fall all the way in because the smoke at the top of connector won't allow him to utilize that opping in such a position. And this still is covering on B because this is smart. Markolov hasn't left. Yeah, this great stuff because they're actually splitting up the defense here. There's two people and they have to cover, well, both, connect, uh, both Catwalk and the apartments as well. And you can tell 20 seconds left here. Simple going to be a kill on Alu, but now they're coming into the bomb side. Simple rotating on in this great work here on flip side. Hiko with a kill on Forrest and he keeps spraying. He gets a double before he eventually goes down. And 12 seconds here for this 2v2 bomb. It's in the bomb side. They need to get it down. Freiburg picks up a triple, but now he has to punch in those numbers. He can't stop. He has to hold it down here. And Blade trying to get into a good position. He's got the M4 swing around. Freiburg looking for a quad kill, but Blade oh. will take him out. And he's got time to find that AWP as well. That was a. Uh, I was a bit concerned for Blade because when he entered the site, he'd already given up the plant yeah. and he made noise on his way through. So Freiburg knew exactly where he was and that was in Battle of Ring around the Rosary. You've given Freiburg the chance. In that exchange, you typically think is the, you know, the better individual player would win that duel. So really well done for Blade to hold out on that. And there it is. They win another gun round. They'll buy it. They've got full money bonus going the way of NIP right now, but nothing working in their favor. And Hiko again, they come toward him. He seems sprayed down with another double. So he's looking solid on that B site. They might have to evaluate trying to get in connector and splitting on A. 
I mean, it might be time for just a, a very standard round here to try and see if you can get the smokes off in a bomb site. Maybe put simple uh, out of uh, out of his job for just a little bit until those smokes fade and put the bomb down, fight for the after plant, and and you know nothing too flashy in a sense because these B splits are, I think they're a really good idea, but they're sometimes hard to to make work properly. We saw the flip side got a couple of really great opening franks in that uh, B take. Yeah, right. It's just gonna sit by and. Apartments, make sure no one's going to push into that deep smoke. i will give up that he's there, but it also won't allow too much map control loss, so not really much of a gain, just a utility used. And now Forrest goes back for the bomb. And this is where it's interesting because they've already fully committed to a rotation, so this might be the exact round you were talking about, a more standardized A play. They've got a player inside Palace, so they can come from both angles. Nothing going on in mid. That will allow Simple to rotate over, but if they smoke this correctly, actually, they're going to go for the wall of smokes. They want to play the Navi smokes close on the site. They're not... I'm not sure they got one out on jungle, so Simple might still have a vision here. Yeah, but I actually kind of like this play. This bomb plant is going to be really big. Simple, I think, almost killing a teammate. He was definitely a little bit wired there. 30 seconds left, NIP trying to make their way in. Blade could have maybe got a multiple spray down there, but Alu and Freiburg picking up a good kills. Exist to take down Simple, and that has to be the jackpot right there. Bomb is down. It's a 2v4, and as long as they don't show themselves, there's almost nothing that Flipside can do to actually retake this bomb site. If they get an early kill on someone from NIP, and Alu in a way is giving them away back in the round here, although he's doing a lot of damage to Markolov, and he's going to end up going down. So now it's a 2v2, and NIP making a mistake here they don't need to make at all. Hiko trying to push up. Not a lot of time left on that bomb, though, and Freiburg shows himself by Tetris. Get right gets a kill. Hiko picking up one more. He's got the double. He's holding it down. Get right. Surely just going to come and peek him, and he's going to spray it, and NIP, well, they'll win the round, but it's very, very close with that spray not connecting. And... That dead, I mean, from a two on four into a 1v1, that was a big mistake on an IP side. Absolutely. Absolutely, because they had all the positions down. I, I actually thought that they didn't smoke. We didn't see the two that came up from the palace side to cover off over toward jungle. I didn't think they were going to cover it at all, but that was an interesting wall of smoke across the back of the site with a gap in the middle intentionally to try and take out anyone that's waiting by the firebox. So a little bit of a different play from an IP. Either way, it's Alu to lurk all by his lonesome. He's already spotted a one-up, but look at the damage. That Nate goes past him. I actually said he's all by his lonesome, but clearly not. The overlay lies. Exist was hugging him so tightly we couldn't see him on the map. That buddy system going on. Getting a bit too Never friendly. walk home alone at night. I mean, at this rate, uh, NIP just got to keep winning, but it's kind of... Um, I would say it's a big uh, warning sign right now that you can't... You almost can't win a 2v4 in that A-bomb site when the bomb is planted in a very good position already, and there's so much time for you to play around with. NIP going to go back to the default A execute, but with a bit of a variation this time. They've got Get Right coming up for underpass, and that's cool. It's a good way of doing it, just the flip side. Don't get too comfortable. And if he can, uh, you know, shoot someone in connector, all of a sudden the defense is going to be much lighter on this A bomb side. This time they don't smoke the center of the bomb site, but they're going to go for the deep, the normal, the normal smoke uh, yeah, sequence here instead. CT spawn and connector. And uh, Blade, just trying to see if he can stay alive here on the stairwell. I think he spots out Get Right, and the timing is perfect. Simple holding with the AWP is, in fact, going to miss the shot. But the smokes are gone, and NIP being very slow in this round. And I'm not exactly sure what the reason for it was. They're going to lose that round very swiftly. And, I mean, at this rate, we could be seeing a third map here. It looks like NIP are just getting crushed. Yeah, there's really not much going their way at all. The smokes worked the first time they got in, and even that round became close. Reset money bonus, back on nothing here, and I mean, Simple's just adaptive with that op. He heads back over to the CT spawn, and Smoke's gone. Like you said, they walk in, and it's just an op with a free line of sight, two easy kills. And now Simple goes back to mid right off the start. Now they're going to take these pistols over to B, so Hiko's going to be the player that comes under threat right away. But he still has Markolov not far away at all. In fact, he hasn't even gone up catwalk to the corner yet. He's still inside, but nice molly. That's actually really smart to slow them down on the underpass. They can't even get back toward mid. Yeah, I think it's like even a molotov he combo. So, you know, you walk into that, you're probably going to be dead fairly quickly. I don't know what NIP are hoping to get out of this round. I, I think, especially, if, in fact, on a map like this, it's, it's so worth it to buy one flashbang and one smoke just trying to see if you can get something out of these eco rounds because otherwise, you're not leaving yourself much of a chance here. Hiko will go down and get right. Doesn't currently have the bomb. It's back there somewhere and he can't pick it up in time. So a single kill on Hiko is not quite going to be good enough. Again, if you if you just have that one smoke, you can you can hope to get a bomb down, and that's I think it's worth the investment. NIP going to be behind seven rounds, and this is like a repeat of Inferno only in reverse. Yeah, and simple. It, 
you said last game was near the bottom with Hiko. Now Simple's at 13, leads the way right now, and the server's confidence is alive. We saw that. The thing with he Simple is when he gets one kill in a round, he often gets multiple. So he'll have these quiet rounds, and then he'll have these nuts ones, like that 4K with the USP. We saw two in that round. We saw three in another. He adds them up quite quickly. So close smoke catwalk this time. They're going to walk around. Exist wants to be the first in him with, four, with Markolov, excuse me, down. Bit of a chance here that they can overwhelm Hiko, who's yet to spot the first two that have dropped in. He's definitely heard them, but Get Right's already in a position to catch him when he rotates back in. And Exist's going to smoke off window. This is looking actually really good for NIP to get a bomb down and get a decent post plant situation. Yeah, for a brief second, I thought that was Exist getting that kill while jumping midair, but it wasn't. It was Forrest from, the, from behind him, but I was about to take off my headset and just throw it somewhere. Get Right gets a kill there, and Blade will try and return. Super quick round here from NIP as they just rush into that bomb site. And they're there way before Flipside can actually make this work. So get right with the triple, and then IP going to win the round 8-2. and two. Pretty good job. And I mean, if, if communication is an issue for Flipside, going quickly will give them less time to communicate, and maybe that's going to be at least... I don't think it's going to be a whole Swing answer, it. but it's going to be part of the answer anyway. Yeah, I mean, potentially, but when you're going quickly into the site that Hiko is already playing in, there's no communication that Hiko has to say other than B, and he's already in the fight, whereas if they've... They're calling for late rotations on A. Maybe he will get a little more, more confused, but it's pretty obvious we've got to do in those situations. Just kill people. Should kill be. everyone. But they failed at that. And maybe... Uh, maybe they should have picked up a Finnish sniper. A Finnish sniper? Well, they got a Ukrainian sniper, and he's doing pretty damn well at the moment. He's down to 30 health at the, this point in time, though. NIP, a lot of mid-control right now, and they're going to try and go for the boost up into window room, which is always a fun idea. Though... Flipside can see it coming quite a, a distance away. I think Blade is the one holding it from CT spawn, essentially. So if they try and sneak too close here... Oh, it's just a simple holding it instead, sorry. And Blade there, up on the stairwell, going to be picking up two kills on Freiburg and one on Exist as well. And now a really good start here. Flipside just making life hard for NIP. Blade with a triple and a little bit of spray through the ceiling there. Alu going to pick up the kill on Bondig and a grenade kill, picking it a double. Get right takes out Hiko. How is this happening from a 2v5 into a 2v2? 30 seconds left on the clock, though. Very low HP on Alois. We can see one. And it's an M4, not an op. If, I, if he has an op, it doesn't matter how much HP he has. He just needs the shot. This makes it a little bit more interesting for him. That said, if he finds Fimble, Simple, excuse me, with only 30 HP, there's a bit of a chance. Late smoke out on top of Connector. That bomb was covered, and Markolov perfect spray through it. He knew exactly where that was placed, and he's going to go back in the other one. Markolov, insane. That is some nuts timing on Markolov. Those two kills were uh, quite impressive. And he was playing a really good angle. You could see he was a bit worried that they were going to come and wrap around him, but they didn't have enough time. So if they go and pick up the bomb and smoke it off there, and the fact that they put down the smoke is kind of important as well, because Markolov actually had a Molotov. So I thought for a moment he was going to try and just Molotov on the bomb and say, look, you're going to waste so much time here. It's not going to be fun at all. Nine and two, and NIP back with no armor. They do have two deagles, though. One on Alu and one on Forest. You never know once those deagles are in play. Hiko going to go for the deep smoke again, and as he does, NIP feel like it's time to go. Uh, just the M4 bullets left in Hiko's chamber here. Not that many. He's going to go for a couple of headshots. Lands one. Get right and Exist will get a kill each in return, and they're going to be a bomb plant here for them, which is going to be important. And Exist, in fact, picking up two kills. Still should not be around for NIP, but they are really making a, a lot out of this round. Get right, just playing ring around the rosy. Ah, oh, you almost looked the right direction, but Blade got there just in time. I was looking for something special, something to excite us. It could have probably, I mean, it could have been once you're in that 2v2, but um, they played it rather well. And 10-2 um, looking I mean, like a strong start for flip side. I, I'd similar score to what we saw in Inferno. I mean, when it was 14-1 at half, well, it's not quite the same. They've got two. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to have the score. Remember what I said, though? It's because I jinxed them by saying they'd never given up double digits in a map so far. That just did happened. say that. Nip fans, time to tweet at say the kiss. We already got Please all don't. the Finnish people doing it. My new HTC M9 hashtag HD e esports is getting overwhelmed right now. You're just gonna have to let it have a break. <laughs> Wonderful plug right there. Exist gonna be moving in and a good spray down there. Markolov already gone and he's gonna continue to try and see if he can find an opening. But Blade again hiding in the smoking connector gonna take him out. Bondic with a strong kill on Alu and they're a man down now. NIP they've been spotted this well. Get right gonna pick up the kill, but Forrest goes down. Ironically playing in get right position and Freiburg gonna be alone in a 1v3 here. No bomb plant yet and he's gonna have a hard time actually putting down the bomb. He gets a shot on Blade but Ooh, nine down to 9. Yeah, this is not looking cool at all. Simple to take him out. And that is another round for Flipside and NIP's economy is not strong enough yet. 
They've reset their own uh, uh, round loss bonus, and they don't get the bomb plant. So round 14, flip side with a massive opportunity to do just add to their lead, continue this tally moving forward and take the momentum. Again, their T side's very solid on this map when they have momentum, and they definitely have that now. So we'll see how that has an effect. Simple's going to open it up again by finding Freiburg and goes for a JW play where it jumps out the window, checks the underpass, and immediately walks back into connector. So we can rotate back to window should the call be required if they work up toward mid. Meanwhile, it's Alu in the underpass, and Simple's already staring that direction, so he's got good position on Alu as well. That Molotov will go slightly deep because Alu's on the ledge. But Bonnick uh, get right. Everything's working in their favor. No damage dealt in reverse so far onto the CTs. And just stay efficient. Again, keep NIP from doing any damage. They're going to be able to buy in the next round regardless, but why give them any frag money? Give them anything even to pick up utilities at this point because another round where the bomb is not going to be in position to get planted right now with only Forrest left. He waits at the top of middle. They did get one in return. Forrest actually uses the deagle to get Bondic, but it's Blade. There it is. 12-2, last round of the half coming up and very little money to work with still. Enough to buy out, but not necessarily full utilities on everyone here. Yeah, simple lost the AWP in window, but as you can tell, you had around 7,000 at the beginning of this round, so it's not a big issue here. 15th round coming up, and flip side, fully equipped NIP. They've got the equipment as well here, so let's see what they can actually uh, do in the last round of the half. But either way, 12-3 or 13-2, none of those scores are very good for NIP. Freiburg going to go with the smoke here, and it's going to be the default round once again. See if uh, they can do it. And they are sort of sandwiching Bondig in here. Can he pick up a kill? They're checking all around, but he's going to go for the shot anyway. Almost takes down Freiburg. And now they're going to have to go for and play for the retake here, Flips. I'm pretty sure NIP are going to be able to get the bomb down. But retaking on A is uh, not as hard as, it, hard as it seems. It's easier than on uh, most of the bomb sites in the game. It's definitely got the open possibility to find the angles. Hiko burning for us to live. Firebox app to the name. And Simple looking over top, just missing the head off exists right now. But he's still in a decent position here to play from Tetris if he gets the cross. The smoke's already out though, and they're on the defuse. Little do they know they're on the defuse. They're not going to get this at all. This is going to go the way of flip side. Simple gets one more kill, but Alu and Freiburg can do nothing. And that was Hiko just running right into it and, uh, and defusing the bomb in the middle of all of it. Very cool stuff here. 13 and 2. Yeah, and there was so much uh, gunfire and so many grenades being thrown back and forth that no one can hear the tap of the bomb there. And I think no one spotted him, so that's very interesting. Flip side, after uh, completely crushing Lost on Inferno, they're, they're back to exact revenge on NIP. So, so your 2-1 prediction. I know. I'm looking good. I'm, a, I'm such a genius. Yeah. Is that your mother uh, telling you that as well? No, she gave me the genes. I'm actually a genius. All right. You realize they didn't call it genius because of genes, you know? It's not like, it's not how it works. <laughs> it's actually clever. <laughs> okay, look, we're gonna, it's probably not very clever at all, actually. <laughs> Simple is going to be uh, getting an opening shot there on Alu. He bought a Deagle and a pistol round, which is definitely uh, unusual. But for Simple, we kind of expect that. Simple's going to, yeah, exactly. I mean, run this raid boss play. The other one they did it on earlier was Hiko. They had the, the confidence in him to drop a Tech 9 when he ran the raid boss, so... Meanwhile, the armor on the Glocks, so they don't actually swap the guns over. Meanwhile, get right though, takes one with the P250, up close, P2000, excuse me, adds to that stat track total. Now he realizes he's got company coming in the back door as they head through into the B site, but a quick rotation out from jungle allows through the vents three players to get inside the site, and Forrest is one of them, but he may not need to be there as Get Right's going to take down everyone. Finally gets dropped by Markolov. Hiko before that contributes with one, so it's a two on two. In fact, Hiko's going to bring it back. They've got the favor now. And it is the armor players that are up against Forrest. He's got armor himself, but only the USP up close. Can't hit the one tap, and Markalov, he's going to close it out. Similar situation to Inferno. They dominate the first half, they win the pistol, and they are in great position to close this out. There was some quite cool movement in this round from Get Right, because just, about, just as he's about to get shot in the back from whoever is coming in, I think that was actually Blade coming in from Catwalk, he moves just a little bit to his right, so that he's not visible from Catwalk anymore. And he ends up getting a triple kill. So, I mean, some good headshots, but also I think movement-wise, that was a cool round from Get Right. Doesn't really help in the end as uh, Flipside's still going to win it. That's oh, miss smoke. Fail, which it does pretty often. Um, it's, it's just not such an easy smoke to land, even though it maybe it feels like it should be. It's 5-7, uh, and then a single scout on Get Right here for NIP, trying to hold on to this map, but I'm not sure. Well, that's the thing. This could was the series we said I could surprise and go to that third map. Remember, there's still one more quarterfinal after this. Navi and Renegades. Meanwhile, Envious Cloud9 already through, and Hiko already through Connector, but it's exists to find him at the top of the stairs. So he won't get into the A site for free passage, but Blade's inside the ladder room popping out. That scout didn't pop him. 
quite so quickly. Saw him on the edge of the scope, but it's played to get the kill, and now Forrest has to recover this round, or at least make an attempt to so far, because Alu's now got simple. They've divided out the offense, in fact, the bomb all the way inside B, but it's all by its lonesome 4 HP for Markalov. If this goes down right now, there's still a long way for Bondic to go. So smart by Markalov not even to attempt to plant to give away the, his exact position. He's just got to hold and get the support system in place. Yeah, I mean, if Bondic is up in apps, maybe he can defend the bomb long enough, but I think he still needs Markalov to get at least one kill. They can't do this, you know, 1v3. He's Bondic needs it. a little bit of help. Yeah, he's going to go for the plant, and that's going to be a quick retake there. So 14 to 3. Let's say to Kist, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Say scout again. Scoot oot in a boot. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Are we going to chug maple syrup later? Um, I challenge you to a duel. I mean, I imagine, I imagine I'll get some sort of heart attack if that happens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're not supposed to drink it raw, are you? You no, put I, it on like pancakes, right? I mean, I've, done, I've done crazier things. It is designed for pancakes. It is a syrup. Ma maple syrup, sh syrup shots, you know? There are, that, that, that exists. I imagine it does. <laughs> Just make sure you take the purse to the bar when you order it. Mm, okay, okay. Alu going to open up on simple, though, so things are looking good this time for NIP after that eco. Maybe a case for them to at least make things uh, annoying for Flipside at this point. As they work toward Get Right, he threw out that initial flash. The nade just completely detonates on top of Blade's feet. It's going to Get Right just to mow them down after that. Forrest gets the initial and then Get Right with three. Yeah, nice defense, and I mean, flip side running through the smoke. I think just a sign that they know it. Like they don't want to try and you know play hard to get in the round like that. They just want to get it over with, so they can get the AKs and finish this game, which uh, they should definitely be able to do. But you got to be caref careful that your mind is not already in the next map as you're still playing the second map, because that's actually a way that NIP can get back here. It seems highly unlikely that they're going to win 12 rounds in a row, but, but crazier things have happened. And right now. Freiburg with that M4A4, and someone was pointing out actually Hiko likes using it as well. It's just going to go down, and speaking of Hiko, he's the one to open up this round for a turn by Forrest, and now they're going to be running into the site. Freiburg instantly gone, and now Alu up on the stairwell trying to see if he can find an opening. And that bomb plant is very close to happening. Simple taking down Alu with the AK. Not uh, able to afford the AWP, but still doing good work here. Get right and Forrest are left, and it's looking like map point here for Flipside. Again, this is not a position you should be losing. 2v4, all you have to do is uh, essentially set up crossfires and you're going to be good to go. Simple, though, not it's interested simple. in anything like that. Getting a triple kill in the round. Yeah, yeah, I love that. You say just set up crossfires and it's simple doing yeah, simple yeah. things. Just walks out, takes the fight. He's got 21 kills, but so does Blade, in fact. So they're kind of tied for, uh, for score at the moment. Top fragging on NIP is get right at 17. So significantly higher than all of his teammates as well. Next highest, 9. Alu. Time to make some of those, you know, minus X plus someone else threads. Those are always quality threads. Minus get right plus one more bot. Yeah. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> it's too late. Now. I'm going to quit while I'm, I'm behind. Oh, no. Freiburg and Alu actually picking up two big kills here. Flipside losing two players early on in the 20th round. And Freiburg to spray down another one, making it a double for himself. And... This should have been the round where Flipside just kind of cruise into the third map, feeling great about themselves, and then they run into NIP, who just, you know, prolong it a little bit longer. But still, what do you think, Sadikis? Give us, give us a forecast here. What's the, what, are, what are the odds for overtime? I'd say about uh, 10 to 1, to be truthful here. All right. Do you want to go by rounds? I see, I, see, I see what you're saying. I, I am thinking it's highly unlikely. Fortunately, Flipside have no economy right now, so I don't know. I mean, one slip up, there's a, maybe we'll get to like 15. I'm going to go, f I'm going to say 16 8 is going to be our final. 16 8. You're giving NIP a couple of more rounds to, uh, to play around with. That's all I'm going to give them. Simple's got the only AK, and he's actually trapped right now between that fire inside the B apartment, so a bit of a chance. But this is a long smoke right now over top of the gate site. And Freiburg up close actually has Blade completely blinded in the corner. Markalov gets the first kill, makes it a bit interesting. Now forces Freiburg to fall back because now he's not sure if he's going to get taken out from Palace, but running into his crosshair. Simple, meanwhile, getting get right over on B, so that keeps the AK up. Not for long. NIP, they'll win this round easily with the guns. And it's going to be 15-6. I got two to go. Yeah, not that much money on flip side once again here, but they are going to buy up this time around. They're, they're tired of waiting. And um, I don't know. I mean... I love to see NIP. They've got so much money. They're not obviously going to be uh, saving for anything at this point here. So I'd like to see them try and go for, for maybe an auto sniper in that A bomb side. Just to shut down flip side 
because they will eventually go for a, for a sort of standard A execute. And the auto sniper is so good at locking it down. Bondic with a good opening kill sees the aggression from Forest, and that's going to be a good start. This gives Blade a bit of a chance actually to work up with Exist trying to peek over top of this smoke. Because if they can get a flash even in the corridor to turn Exist around, he's close enough that it would be an easy kill for Blade to come through on. And there's no one in window to stab him in his attempt to do so. As now he looks to set up that crossfire. But they're all coming around and there it is. Hiko actually just takes down Exist straight up. So they may just have the A site to work on. They're trying to try and rotate the long way around through the vents, but they'll beat the player that gets to jungle. So they will actually get the man through vents. That's Alu to get in position. He has the op, that flash coming through. But with this smoke out of top connector, they may go back toward Catwalk because they're unsighted right now. This may actually work out perfectly for Flipside. Well, Freiburg makes it a little bit more manageable for NIP, bringing it back a bit closer. And Hiko and Bondic are kind of low on health. Get right, going to go for the underhand flash. And he's actually a bit off on the timing. They were hiding in the corner, waiting for the flash pain before they peek. So that's a very cool idea. Molotov goes down, and Hiko, oh, he's almost going to burn. Then Alu picks up a kill, but. This might be the end. It's a 2v3 bomb taking away inside, and Freiburg now showing up on Catwalk. Maybe he's the only one who could do this because he's got the health for it. Going to spray down Markolov. And uh, the remaining two Flipside members, not very healthy at the moment. Freiburg charging in, and they will actually do the retake. Freiburg with a triple, Aldo with a double, and NIP making it to 15 7. It's almost like they want that prediction of yours to come true. I know. I wasn't worried. I knew we were getting to 16 8. One way or another. I was going to go unplug some more servers to make sure we got there. Oh, I mean, now, now I'm getting worried. More, more than anything, <laughs> I don't want you to be right. That's, <laughs> that's actually my only concern right now. Uh, that can't happen. It won't happen. They'll eco right now. They have to. Scout for Simple looking for the shot. In fact, no surprise, he's the one to buy it up because he gets in these situations. He's always the man that has a plan. He definitely takes things into his own accountability. But Markolov's in the underpass already. Alu looking to bounce that nade out, but it bounces a little bit too deep back in the corner. So no one boosting. It doesn't do damage as intended. Bondic waiting palace. So they're going to split. They're going to try and get through this connector and split onto this A site. And the saving grace to that right now is actually that Exist is in the process of rotating back through CT. And a nice shot by Bondic's going to take down the only other player inside, directly inside the A site. As there'll be a forced rotation all the way back through Cat on B. So there's a big play to come out if they want to get to the A site. But meanwhile, flip side after this initial pick, look to go toward B again on Catwalk. Wow, that was the Deagle Crab Walk. That's very, very annoying for Freiburg, obviously. Smoke and Flash follow up there. Alu going to turn back and will pick up that kill on the Markolo fairly easily, but simple as day. Drops Alu, and now it's a 4v3. Exist holding by CT spawn. About 35 seconds left, and the flip side are going to execute towards this A bomb site, but they don't have any grenades or anything. They just try and get in here as, as a group and try and see if they can get the bomb down before Exist actually ruins their day here. 25 seconds. Can they finally make it? They're coming up from uh, window room as well. Forrest is going to walk in and get the kill, and that's going to leave Blade alone. He goes down. Exist with a nice round here. A triple in total, making it to 15-8. This is it then. Am I right? This is it. I mean, if there is any justice in the universe, this, this won't happen. I had a dream within a dream within a dream, and this was it. Uh, yeah. You've already told us about your mom. Don't, don't anymore. <laughs> It's uh, <laughs> so simple is actually going to go with the one for the peak this time, going right to the op. So they're using the full economy that they're giving. Freiburg wants to get up on top of Palace, again, above the shadow. But the interesting thing here is that it's a slightly different play. They don't go for the high mid approach. They just put two players in underpass and then secure out eight. They wanted to get double presence on the ramp. And they had to act a horseshoe. It's an interesting setup because they don't actually have that much information yet. They still have the bomb over on the B side and they're running one lurk with a three stack already on A. If they can somehow get a read on NIP's positioning, there's a really good chance of them to hit B quickly here. Yeah, it wouldn't be too, bad to, uh, too much of a bad move, really. Um, you're right, those two pillars in A are quite far away as well. Forrest will uh, Molotov up underpass, though, and we'll see. Flip side are starting to push up a little bit in middle. They still got the bomb very far back here, so... They just need that one opening frag, and they're going to be good to go. NIP are holding super defensively, though. It's going to be really hard flip side to get even a single uh, opening kill. They might just have to use the grenades they have to execute. Forget about those, those opening frags. Well, that's the thing. Just get the, into the site and get the bomb down. Again, though, bomb's still lurking over toward the B apartments. It's going to be get right that has to close them off. Molotov to check the corner of the van. That flash came out there. Look how much they get delayed by that. And when they go to look for the peek end toward the window, it's get right that easily lines the first up. Markolov getting him back, though. 
It's still a man down because just before that, Forrest picked up one of his own and he's still in a good position when they cross over. Can he get a second? He does, but immediately traded and refragged by Bondic. Gives Alu the position to rotate back around and he'll get him, but it's simple that's alive. One on two and it's simple that's lagged down to four HP. What can he possibly do with the AK? Gets it down to a one on one, but time expires. And there's justice for you, Anders. So, uh, you know, a huge feeling of relief just washing over me. How, I mean, you can't see my face, but, you know, just the, the smile. I have to take a drink of water. <laughs> it was a nice guess, though. It was very close to being true. I'll give you that. You know, you throw out random numbers, and, and it almost works. I like that. If you have to make predictions, you have to just follow through with them. That's how people believe that you know that you're on point here. Predict with your heart, not your head. Exactly. Eight. Uh, sorry, um, Exist here, just waiting inside. I was going to say he's number eight on the minimap, but um, Freiburg right behind him as well. They actually both have the M4, but I think, yeah, Freiburg picked the one up, so Exist is not with the money uh, to be able to buy that. And we're at 15-9, so I think it could still happen here. Another five or six rounds, six rounds, sorry, for uh, NIP, and we're going to be at overtime, and that would probably be crushing to flip side. Yeah, I mean, that would... We talked about momentum bringing it back from... A horrible start to the series that would just crush them even if they win that in overtime like it's still like wow we just blew that lead like you go into map like how do you reset from that having already overcome the first like it's like, you gotta reset twice in a series at that point yeah i'm not sure you will i think if, if it goes to overtime nip should definitely have it they'll have such a such a momentum boost that it's almost unreal get right just gonna be quick up into the ladder room and he will hear someone running out of underpass and sees them shooting as well so he should have a pretty good idea what's going on here rotating back around his exist towards the connector and he's waiting for them to try and make their way through. 30 seconds left here on flip side. Not a lot of time to try and get into a bomb side, but Simple will open it up and Exist gets a kill. Freiburg picks up one, and Freiburg with a double before he goes down. It's still going to be a 2v2. Get right picking off one. And now it's all on Bondic here to try and clutch it. He's going to get the bomb plant, but um, how is he going to make his? We can't really escape that corner of the bomb site now. No, he can't. He's actually lurking it though, so get right. Pop this flat, or smoke out, excuse me. He's actually got himself in an okay position as Bondic, but the problem is that as soon as he gets in the open, much further than that, it's exactly. Forrest is there. So A ramp, Tetris, that's the play he wants to make. He didn't really even plant it for that, but there's nowhere else to go in that situation, and he hesitated a little bit. If he had just gone and sparred right away with Get Right, maybe he had a chance on low HP with Get yeah. Right on 22. But once he hesitates and stays in the open that much longer, Forrest is easily going to hit that shot. And Exist is going to buy out an op. They just dropped that. So double op setup right now for NIP. I like that. Like I said earlier, I thought the, maybe the auto sniper was going to be the key, but sure, why not go for the double op setup here? Flip side, because of the bomb plan, are going to be able to buy all AKs and a pretty decent uh, amount of grenades as well. So we'll see if this is going to be the round where they can actually close out the map or if they are going to be somehow ending in overtime. That would be quite the comeback from NIP. Yeah. I mean, that's, that would be insane, considering it started from an eco after losing the second pistol as well. Like, that, that was the writing on the wall at that point. So flip side are definitely still tilting. I mean, this is, this is one of the things that this team is known for a little bit, although Simple still having a reasonable individual performance as it's Bondic to open it up. So now they've got some space to work with, and in fact, a decent, quick execution. Bomb's already inside the A site. There's no one inside the perimeter right now from NIP, and they're down to only three players remaining against the five of flip side. So we might be heading to map three if this round plays out as it should. Alu looking over top of the smoke, gets on top of Ticket Booth, but he whiffs on the first shot. Markalov takes him, it's simple. There it is. Bondnik closes it. And there's some crowd and cheers in the crowd, oddly enough. I imagine that's for Hiko and, and just upsets overall. Yeah, really, really well played. I mean, um, I love the fact, and this is such a simple detail, but I love the fact that they were, they were actually pre-aiming the Ticket Booth there. That should become like a more and more standard thing, if you, at least if you have the, the smoke people. Out. Yeah, and you have the people still alive for it. The problem is once you start being a man or two down, it's going to be hard for you to keep that. But um, otherwise, pretty, pretty well done, uh, I think, for a flip side there. Super strong first half in the second half. A little bit of a bumpy ride, but they made their way home anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's really well done to come back after the scoreline that we saw on Inferno. It yep. would have been nice for them, just for their confidence, to wrap it up right away. But I think they still got there. They don't care. That's yep. enough. Just... Like you said, if it had gone to overtime, it might, might, might have been a different story. But they've got time now in their head to just say, all right, map three, we're in position, we're inside their head, we're back in the series. And Nip now, no, it's not going to be easy. They have to play it. So we will take a short break. I know that's just to add to the compilation. We will not take a short break. We will take a short intermission. Play around connector on the CT side. Uh, he could be everywhere on the map pretty much all at the same time. So um, I think it's actually good for NIP to get start CT side here just so that they'll have to... Or maybe they can get a good start and not have to deal with simple swap on the CT side too early on. 
But we're going to see how it's all going to unfold here as they do have three armors in play on the terrorist side and uh, Blade and Markolov with a grenade each. This is the boost off the start for pistols as well. So if this is going to be an A push, which it looks like it has the potential to be right now from flip side, then it's a really passive hold. They'll be on top of the site early on. They have a smoke for Blade. Only a single smoke, though, so they won't be able to put one on either side of the bomb box and go immediate plant. They have to still look for an entry on the way through, and obviously, based on the positions of NIP, that's going to be the case. It's great that Symbol is literally right underneath this boost, and he's going to maybe walk almost into that so scary close. If he walks forward now, then Exist is going to be able to see him, and there's another boost going on on the other side of the map. So Nip essentially building towers all over the map, and there's Exist picking off Simple. He did eventually walk into it, Forest. But now it's going A. Yeah, he spotted it out, and you're right, they definitely know. He's looking for a shot as well, and just going to fall off the ledge there. Hiko to return, and Forrest running right into Hiko. He's got the knife oh, out I running with it. the smoke. Forrest is going to get stabbed by Hiko, and it's exist to take down Hiko right afterwards. And NIP trying to bring it back there. They're in a 2v2, the bomb is going down, and they can't stop it. Exist, the running out of bullets, has to fall back and reload. And Freiburg now alone in a 1v2, and he does have a kit picked up currently. He's going to jump. Can't get the shot, looking for the one on Markolov, but in the meantime, all the way in the back line. Blade is just trying to stay hidden. Freiburg pushing up, and he goes down to Markolov. What a round from flip side, including a bit of knife action. And they lost the man early at Hiko. That was just manning up. That's the only have a hammer statement right there. Like, didn't even have the gun. He ran out of bullets and just said, screw it, I'm gone. I thought he was actually going to lose out on that. I thought the reload was going to come in in time, and the animation just didn't quite get there, but... Well done from Flipside to recover that round again, using that one smoke just to block it off. We saw them have to jump over top of the box in the last play just to spot the two players, not even get the shot off. And then at that point, I mean, they already had post-plant position. That's the thing with the A site. I love the new iteration of the extended bomb radius in the A site because you can play post-plant so well from bathrooms. The flank is the only thing you have to worry about through the stairs. I agree, but I also... I do also worry about the fact that people keep planning in that one spot. I feel like one day that's going to be a weakness for the terrorist teams that they that they there'll only pick that. Yeah, there'll yeah. be a counter to it. It'll be too obvious. And I mean, people are already trying to figure it out. Like everyone knows the angle when you come by truck, you can easily sort of pre-fire people who are there. But I think there are other counters as well that could be put into play. But right now that hasn't happened too much. Flip side playing with um, two AKs and a bunch of shot machine guns. And there's a double scout play going on for NIP. And Get Right has one of them, which is interesting. Maybe just a bit unusual. He's jumping behind that SWAT truck up in the A-bomb side. Actually, both the scouts are playing A right now. And the other three people with pistols are stacked down towards B. <clears throat> Get right. Almost uh, getting an opening then. But, oh, he gets the shot through on Simple. And he's down to 14 health. That's a massive shot. That's a perfect way to start it off, isn't it? Especially against a guy like Simple, who's also one of the rifle holders. But they're still going to push forward on A. In fact, Simple with low HP is going to be the one to push out long solo right now. Blade has bomb. And we're seeing it through his eyes, his perspective, his point of view. And it's going to be in they go. Simple gets the kill, oddly enough, against Get Right, even with that low HP. So the AK reigning supreme. And it's Simple again. Never mind how much HP he's got. He's got angles, and he's got the AK, and he's got the kills. And now it's Hiko to add on one to Alu. And Four is desperately trying to pick up that gun, that scout to try and run back away in toward B site because... He's already lost. Bomb's already down. He's got a 5-7 he wants to hold on to, and he actually makes an impressive turnaround. Forrest with pistols can never be discounted, but he can't get out the window fast enough, and Markolov gets the kill. In my mind, I wanted to see Forrest as he was mid-air turn around from the sniper Smack. spot and just shoot someone with the scout. That would have been great. Third round coming up, though. Slightly expensive flip side at the end, but otherwise a pretty good round there. Simple, as you said, almost no health, but still bringing it back. Um, and, um, yeah, ending up with a bit of a double kill in that round. Third round in, and NIP just can't afford the money here. Can't afford the money, can't, don't have the money for any kind of a reasonable buy, so going to be uh, saving a little while longer. Get right pushing into water. Freiburg there on a crossfire to potentially just look for trades, do some damage, slow them down, and a stack on the B site with it. So this is massive to have. I mean, this, the interesting thing is that no one's there. They haven't gotten the information to push out. They could almost, like, mobile this five stack, which we kind of see on cash, where if you, like, stack up the B site, you'll slowly push through tunnels and just wrap onto A for the retake, and then that way you're already on rotation and in en route. But here they're giving up A, and, and yeah, the bomb sites are reasonably close, but it's faster A to B due to gravity. That's natural. So this should be pretty easy for Flipside to walk in and figure this out. Now they're pushing into stairwell, so they may have a chance here to get up behind. 
Yeah, Gerard is going to at least uh, hear Markolov walking a bit there, but he's waiting for him to go right and cross and not going to get the uh, chance for it either. Gerard trying to charge up, but Markolov is already in a pretty good position. Kicked up one kill, gets a second one on Gerard. So, flip side, look to be making this a third round. And I mean, once they got a good start on, uh, on the last map, you saw they weren't really slowing down on Mirage. They got uh, an incredible amount of rounds on the first half. So right now, NIP have got to be a little bit worried that uh, Flipside are going to continue with whatever momentum they had from the previous map. Markolov waiting, and Blade here is a bit of a crossfire setup. And as long as they don't lose anyone at the end of this round, they should be in a decent position in the upcoming fourth round. And Markolov's going to push forward to find out exactly what's going on, because he knows they're waiting on these angles. But he has to at least give themselves some room to exit. Luckily, no one's low enough HP. They should all be able to survive from here. They almost line up for that one. And Forrest actually getting another kill. This is working out okay because now they have two players down. In fact, make it a third. So decent economic damage dealt and an AK picked up for Forrest. That's a win on the exit of that round. It's even more of a win because two of those kills were the UMP. So he has 6,000 means he can drop a rifle and AWP there for allies. You can tell that's such a big victory. Forrest made so much out of that round. Now we've got the fourth round with the AWP for Alu. Otherwise, he would have had to have gone... Well, he actually couldn't buy one anyway, but if he, even if he could have, it would have been no armor AWP. Instead, now it's armor and full grenades. That UMP, or the UMP double or triple kill, maybe even was huge for Forrest there. Making mountains out of molehills. That's what Forrest was doing. And Simple now has the op. We'll see what he can make with it over toward long in fact no one's going to be out that direction right now so more of a passive play on a this time and it's going to be with a double push on water again on b so a bit of a change of pace from nip most teams using that aggressive meta on a to cover off the bathroom nip actually taking the courtyard the construction area and then wrapping into stairwell the problem is right now if they go to wrap on stairwell they do have a little bit of company in the opposing side of the door because that's where markalov has made his home but Nip's not going there. They actually rotate back, so they'll have a stack on this A site, and it looks like that's where the smokes are going to come out, but the bomb's not committed. It's going to be a late rotation to join on with the rest of the team, as Markalov's still just making sure Freiburg cannot push through. But Nip also have the information that they aren't close to the B site, so the stack will stay put until otherwise notified, until they lose a player at B. They don't even need to early rotate based on a fake, any nades whatsoever. They can just sit by, and that's what Getright's going to do. He's going to be the one by the dumpster and Forrest looking by the truck. They might be able to cover off these smokes. We're going to see those go for the default, but they don't cover off the right side. Simple, though, what a shot as he catches Getright. He doesn't even need the smoke, and the entries from Flipside are absolutely flawless and exist. That M4 is too precious. Yeah, he's going to just try and uh, hide and right now might be scolding his teammates just a little bit, saying what the hell was going on about that A-bomb site. That double opening from Simple, the first one pretty early in the round, which gave them so much room to work with. And then, as you said, that second kill, great angle to hold. That's going to make it 4-0. and oh, And NIP, they must have been feeling so good coming into that round. All the money the Forest had, that AWP, everything working for them. And then it all falls apart. They didn't have a single kill on flip side, and uh, they won't get one either. So it's going to be 4-0 and oh here. And we've got to check a look at what the flip side economy is like. It's going to be pretty damn good. Yeah, and this is the thing. We're off to another pistol round loss, first gun round loss for NIP. We, it seems like Inferno is a mile away from where we are now. I mean, this is the momentum again going the way of flip side. And NIP need to start getting on this right now because we saw that they had the potential to make the comeback on Mirage. The problem was they left it so far and so late that they just they didn't give themselves a chance. They need to stay in this now. I mean, even if... They have to play from behind a little bit here economically. They need to do damage to the, the guns that are up. They need to get as many kills in these rounds as possible just so that when they break them, they're in it again right away. And Bondic, he's already going to find Alu, so never mind that thought for now. But there's still a chance here as Exist does have the rifle still up. Yeah, and uh, Flipside just making their way clean into the bomb site. Freiburg fallen, Alu fallen, and neither of those two players has picked up any kills yet in this game. So that's a big problem, obviously. Simple going to be taking down Exist, and it's up to Forrest and Get Right. And Get Right just needs to save this rifle and maybe get a couple of exits if that's going to be relevant. He gets one and then goes down to Blade. And I like the fact that Flipside tried to, to Molotov the barrels there, but instead the Molotov went up mid-air, so it just became kind of like fireworks, like a big beacon saying, we're coming and there's pretty much nothing you do to stop us. It's nice. Yeah. Imagine they just had that in this game, like a little green like pop. Yeah. Hey, here we go. Green light. That would be nice. Fireworks. I mean, we had that one time where they had the confetti in the, in the Seuss. That was amazing. Yeah, which actually was best week of my life. Was taken from the Halo headshot in the birthday update. Why I know anything about Halo, don't ask me. But it's going to be a nice hold this time from NIP. They start with two early on. 
as Bondic does get back in with one, but oh man, Forrest getting just in time back over toward the left, and Blake came out a monster, and Forrest, what a hold. That's the individual play you'll need to get back into it. Four kills from him. Impressive stuff. That was huge, and uh, a, a small glimpse, you know, almost sort of like a, a flashback into what Forrest used to do a lot on various different maps. I mean, I think especially on Dust2, he used to be able to ult really, really well. Probably still can, but we don't see that much uh, these days. He's going to... Well, actually, Al will pick up a second orb, so they're going to go for the double orb setup here. If Flipside win this round, NIP might just crumble, and actually, I mean, then I would say they're in danger of losing the map entirely. That would be a big shock, wouldn't it? If Flipside knock NIP out of the tournament, that'd be huge. Get right there. With the, with the stand in. Specifically, with this. somehow that stings even worse, doesn't it? Yep. It has to. I mean, that just plays in the mind. It's like one of those inexcusable things to happen. As simple tries to fire back through the plywood to do some damage onto Freiburg. Instead, he gets passive inside the site, but it's still Forest where we saw him. Similar position. In fact, a little bit more aggressive this time as he's on the front face of Monster. When they head in, actually, I take that back, it's Exist that's over there. Forest, we can see now, is actually on top of the stairwell. I just assumed, but... I mean, but if you look at Geraint's position here, they know so much NIP right now about what's going on on this map. Forest is covering stairwell and oh. almost gets the shot that's very, very close. But the fact that Geraint's so far pushed up, it means they, they can guess there's going to be a B push unless Forest somehow gets forced back and has to change his position. That's really the only other way out. And look at this... Cr oh, Alu! going to be walking away. It looked like they were about to cross the L bend there. I mean, the, the guy that was simple is all the way in the back, but it looked like they were about to push in. If he just stays there another three or four seconds, he's going to get the good shot in. And Freiburg goes down. I think they needed Alu up on that sniper spot. Bondic is going to go down to get the kill on Existent. Forrest goes down as well. What is going on? Flip side. NIP. They knew that they were going to come for this B bomb side, and yet they somehow managed to get distracted and end up Falling back at the wrong time. Get right sneaking up behind. He's only going to get the one kill. That could have been a double as well. And now Alu has to try and clutch it here in a 1v2. He's got the smoke up, but he doesn't have a kit currently picked up. And he's got an AWP, not the best weapon for it. He misses the ah. flick and goes down to Bondic, who gets a triple. And that is a disaster. NIP. Not sure what that round. Yeah, pause being called for you by Exist. I definitely this understand why. Yeah, this is 100% tactical this time. It has to be. This, this is, is getting out of hand. You've only picked up the one. You reset money bonus. I mean, this is where Nato just has a ruler, and everyone on NIP, they put their fingers on the table, and then it's just smack, smack. That's all, you know, you can't lose around like that. I can't think of a better setup almost for defending a B-bomb site. Get right yeah. with all the info to give your team. Forest making sure no one can sneak in. There is no other way to get on the A side of the map, and yet they started to doubt themselves over the B-bomb site and, and Alu, gave the opening. Yeah. yeah, Alu, at the exact moment, it looked like someone was going to push in toward this, the site, so... We do have the confirmation it is, no surprise, strategic pause now from the producer, and they're definitely, I mean, you can see them, look, they're totally discussing the positions in this. Because this is, I mean, this is, like I said, it seems like Inferno is miles away from what we saw. Yeah. And 16-1 for NIP is how this series started, if you're just joining us. Goes 16-9 on Mirage with a decent comeback. Was 16-9 in the end? I can't remember. Yes, I think Yeah, 16-9. Right. And then now we're here where Flipside again has an early lead, much like they did on Mirage when it was 14-2 at half, or that's not mathematically possible. 13-2. <laughs> yes. It was, I mean, it was, uh, it was quite an impressive first half on, on Mirage for Flipside, so the fact that NIP even got close was, uh, you know, maybe just a little bit of a slowdown there on the flip side, but at the moment, this is turning into a very, very scary situation for NIP, and that tactical pause, I think, it's, it's probably a good idea to call it now. We're having this discussion with Flaren and some of the other games, you know, is it better to wait and actually, uh, you know, do the pause at the end, towards the end of the game? But I think right now, you need, you need a mental reset, because NIP are definitely tilting. Yeah, this is, the, I mean, th this is the absolute right time. If it's 6-1 and you're now resetting economy, you've already lost the gun round, you've lost the pistol, you have to get into it now. If you get, uh, look what happened last, last match. We actually saw them with the comeback, no time. By the way, you can see Renegades over in the far left of that last shot. Already warming up. They play Na'Vi next. And I think the winner of that plays the winner of this. So it should be NV Cloud9 tomorrow in one of the semis. I think that's yes, the way right. it works. You are right. Which is Cloud9's got to love that moving forward after last weekend. You've been right a lot this evening. It, more than likely, yeah. I more mean, than common, I meant to say. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? I have these days every now and then. <laughs> you put them in a calendar, look back on the year at the end. I smile to myself. Yeah. I had three this year. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Get right, going to be down into the connector. Smoke goes up here, and what can NIP really do? This is, should be 7-1 here. They're running into the B bomb site, and I kind of like this from, from, uh, from
from Flipside, just putting a lot of aggression on. They do lose two entries to NIP though, and Bondi finally returning, and it's going to get another kill. Can he get the third one as well? Exist is playing very close to the bomb site, but the Molotov will force him back. He picks up a kill on Simple anyway. Great job on NIP. If they win this round, that would be such a momentum boost. And Forrest with the USPS picking up Bondic. Now it's all on Markov. He's got so much time to work with. And he knows get right there. He heard him walk into the sandbags, which is why the smoke bloomed. That was put in immediately as Markov hugged the pillar. And yeah, look, re-smoking it because he knows he's still hanging out. If I was Markov, I'd want to pick up that bomb quick and try and see if I could run away somehow because all he wants to do right now is make this a 2-1v1 fight instead of a 1v2. And as long as he stays in this bomb site, it's going to be a 2v1 here. The second he tries to put down the bomb, it'll be awful for him. Just uh, sneaking up behind. And Get Right is right there. The sandbag still waiting. Markolov fakes it once he sees it. Get Right goes for it and ends up dropping now. 25 seconds. And Markolov playing this actually quite smartly. Going to walk in. Forrest up there. He spots him. Knows that he's still there. Going to walk out one more time. They're playing a dangerous game. And Forrest without the armor is very likely to lose it. One shot to the chest and the aim pod is going to ruin his day. He's looking for headshots. He's down to one health. Doesn't need to repeat. Why is Markolov okay? He did have the HP, but if he had lost that on the repeat, that would have been completely unnecessary. Yeah. Either way, it's flip side again picking it up, and he gets the op to recover. All right, so it's, it must be upsetting to NIP not to win that round, but at the same time, if you put it into a little bit of focus, it's also a round where they have absolutely nothing, and they almost win it. So there is definitely a chance here, flip side. I thought it was a good idea rushing for that B bomb site, but um, they, they just lost a couple of early frags, and that's almost all it took. And this is a change of play right now from NIP. We haven't seen them contest the front side of A very often. We talked about how it's been a different meta from them that they've been stacking up that water area. This time more passive B, very aggressive A. More standard default. We'll see if it pays off because they've been giving up a lot of map space and a lot of map control to flip side. Ali looks for the initial shot, already falling back, but still forced is inside the connection point. So he's going to be in good position to make the call and again doubling at water. So aggression on both sides of the map. And if Forrest gets that call early enough and they can win this stairwell, then they can completely trap flip side of the A site. Yeah, and Alu is over there with the AWP on long, and he's going to pick up the kill on Simple, so that's a very good start. He misses the next one, but he's got back up here. Forrest trying to take over, and Blade will drop him instead. That's a great idea for NIP, though, trying to switch the focus of the Blade. Probably thinking about Alu and trying to get the return frag on him, and then Forrest just swings in to get the Famas kill, but it doesn't work out that way. Molotov in to try and clear NIP out of those positions. A pretty good idea, and about 40 seconds left now for Flipside to make up their minds. They could still make their way towards B, but if they want to do that, then they're going to have to move really quickly. Oh, no. oh, with a different angle, couldn't hit the shot, and as a result, Hiko, who's picked up the op, and had already been dropped from Simple, is the one to get the shot, but get right, they don't check that corner, and he goes for a very aggressive early peek as Exist Flash came over. And he actually manages to get Bondic on entry as well, so this looks all right, two on two. Bomb not yet planted, they'll go for it, and they, oh, Exist, he jumps up, he spots it, but he's not able to hit the shots just yet, goes for the reload, they might push on top of him, instead Markolov, it's a team kill, as he goes for the shot on Freiburg, and that gives up the gig, because Exist just waits for it. I am very confused about how that works out in Flipside's mind. If you're in a 2v1 and Exist is back there, it kind of makes sense to try and rush for it and maybe try and see if you can get the kill on him. But a 2v2 like that, you should be able to put the bomb down and just play for the afterplant. And not sure why they felt the need to rush in like that. 7-2 and two and NIP barely survives the round. Maybe even uh, with the assisted team kill there. That's what made the difference, perhaps. Otherwise, NIP could have potentially lost it in... If you're counting on your enemy team to kill each other, you know, that's not a strategy I would go for too often. Forrest picking up that kill on Markolov, and can they get Simplest? Well, Ohiko as well, sorry. He gets one, and the Freiburg is there to help out Forrest, so nice teamwork. And Nip with another man advantage in this round. Looking for consecutive wins. And Vonix coming down, he's going to strip that completely back away from them. So, Caster's Curse, maybe I spoke a little bit too soon because Bondic winning that double now gives Slipside a lot of control. Get right, still inside bathroom, but if we look on the radar to the top left, they're already sneaking in behind him toward the A site. And there's nowhere, there's nowhere for Exist to get him to play. He's so far out of it, but Get right. Oh, this could work out okay. If Blade goes for this plank, Get right's gonna hear it, and Blade's gonna be the open bomb, doesn't do it. Oh, it does! He actually lets that go down. He could add so much more control of the round if he had the bomb dropped. Instead, now they have to play a two on two, and Exist, he already goes down. It's up to Get right to basically retake a site that he easily could have controlled with another footstep forward. And I really want to see Simple run away here. Well, he's going to go for the shot anyway and get uh, the kill on Get Right, but 
As long as Simple and Bondic don't show themselves, there's nothing that Gerai could have done in that one. Great round by Bondic, by the way, controlling the connector. As you said, he got the two kills and sort of managed to steal that away from NIP. And then he stayed there for the rotation to come in and got the third kill of the round. So he pretty much won that round for Flipside. And it's eight and two, and we might be seeing uh, a flip side with not even the full lineup here. Hiko as a stand-in, actually knocking NIP out of this tournament. It's definitely not done yet, but right now it's looking very scary. Oh yeah, I mean, scary is definitely the word to put on it right now if you're an NIP or an NIP fan, because they were on tilt in the last map until they swapped over, and this time it's overpass. It's the T side from flip side that's doing all the work, and NIP just look like they can't win the exchanges. Every time they try and go for refrags, even trades to get map control, it goes against them, and then Momentum shifts, rounds over, they have to go for late rotations, late clutch positions that aren't probable, and Pistol's out again this time. They'll have a bit of a B stack. In fact, already get right, pushing completely through the underpass. Up the ladder he goes. He might have a chance for a flank if he gets on his horse quick enough, but he's going to guess wrong and head over toward B. So they've already got a stack. He's going to try and pinch them. Unfortunately, they've already gone A, and they're going to have this bomb down. Yeah, I mean, so you're right, though. If the timing had been there, maybe get right picks up a kill and... The rest of NIP can sort of coordinate something, but the fact that the bomb is already down here means it's, it's just not going to work out. And it will be 8-2 and two moving into the 11th or 12th round soon. So um, flip side, just a stunning start here. I, I think if they had just got like seven rounds in this first half, flip side would still be in a pretty good position. But the fact that they're about to hit a ninth round is, uh, is making things very, very tricky for NIP. And they don't seem like they have any confidence. And again, I feel like that's one of the key issues right now for the... Swedish ninjas, it's just a lack of confidence. And man, oh man, they just completely annihilate them. The SMG of Blade picking up two, adding more to his wallet. Bomb's gonna detonate, takes down Forrest in the end, and four out of five players survive from flip side to just continue to build this, grow this bank. It's not massive, that's the thing. I mean, they have been getting enough kills that I, I we kind of alluded to it early in the half that when it was 6-1 and they took that tactical, all they had to do is break the bank and get the momentum back. Yeah. The problem is, they're getting it close, they're giving themselves that chance, but then they're not following through with it. If they had won that one eco round, you have to wonder what would have been happening, because then Flipside would have been ecoing, and it would have been a very different game altogether. A and the same could be said for the round where Bondic won the double inside connector, because that would have been two consecutive in the same situation, right? So there's been twice that NIP could have come back into this very easily. Oh, pushing in here. Bondic actually does go down, but he goes down to pick it up, and he falls next in line to get right. This is a round where NIP, again, just have pistols, and somehow they seem to be doing better with pistols than they are with rifles. Alu waiting as they rotate back in, there's no way that they can uh, expect him to be hiding on the lawnmower in the corner there. Alu pick up the kill on Blade. And now Simple and Markolov are left, and the bomb has dropped as well. This is a, is a very, very strange round indeed. Maybe NIP are a bit like Envy. Just play with pistols instead, and you'll be doing better. Might as well. Whatever works. At this point, it doesn't have to be pretty. doesn't have to be fancy. just has to be effective. Another 45 seconds, but Flipside can still get so much out of this round. I mean, they shouldn't be able to win it because there's 40 seconds and they have to make their way all across to the A-bomb side. So NIP should be able to do this, but if the remaining Flipside members pick up a couple of kills here, then NIP's bank could still be uh, ruined rather quickly in the remaining rounds. So they got to be a bit careful still, NIP, that they don't give up these rifles and then they keep everyone alive. Yeah, keep everyone alive is huge. As this is round 12, there's still a bit of time for economy to shift and simple taking down exist. He's going to make it a little bit harder for them. Flashbang out. They know they're going to be rushing onto the sandbags. 12 seconds left. They have to get this bomb. This round's over. They can't possibly take down both, so Forrest is going to hold it. Thanks yeah. for the fire. They wanted to go get the gun. They couldn't do it because they actually put in a Molotov after the round. Yeah, there was an AWP there, I think, for simple, I think wasn't so, there? Yep. Oh, for shame. For shame. That's going to be the 13th round coming up here. 9 to 3 scoreline. And NIP, at least they finally pick it up. And once again, it's a, I mean, they almost won the other week around. This time, they actually do win it. And uh, they're going to be very aggressive here. I kind of like this move from Alu. Again, it's, it's a question of having the confidence to go for these kind of shots. He's going to look over the smoke, but he gets flashed back and ends up falling all the way back towards the restrooms. And flip side, not a lot of money, but still a, a buy being made here anyway in the 13th round. They, they don't want to wait. They want to keep going. Alu's going to fall all the way back onto the A site. And as soon as the op goes back, the rifles go forward. Alu shifts his angle so he covers over to long. And Forrest gets aggressive on entry. Standing at the corner by the bathrooms. In fact, wants to go further than that now just to see what read he can get from flip side. 
who so far have yet to commit. They still have Hiko again playing that Lurk, that solo T-side Lurk out by Monster, and Forrest is going to open it up by finding Bondic. But it's only a single player spotted. Either way, it's a kill. He won't be unhappy about it whatsoever. A good trade by Alu, because Markalov finding Forrest means Alu has to hit that shot. It'll quickly be on top of the site. More importantly, if he goes down, it would have been a nightmare. But and they, know, they can still hold this. They know that symbol's over on long as well, because Alu spotted that as well. So it's looking like a pretty good round right here for NIP. Maybe finally going to be able to make it to four. There's still a long road ahead, but obviously, if they can get nine, six, if they can win the pistol on the second half, if they can maybe bring it back to nine, nine, then at least they're tied and, and we have a real game on our hands. But it's going to require a lot on their part here. Long road ahead. Simple and Blade left in about right. eight seconds. They're just going to save the rifles. Gone indeed. Simple still has the op worth keeping because, again, the economy is very, very shallow for flip side. It dwindled away quite heavily in the rounds we've seen, and specifically these two now that they've picked up. Yeah, there we go. That's all they're going to have to work with, essentially. 2650, 2200. What's the call going to be from Blade? I, it should be just an eco here. It's a bit tricky because Simple and Blade, if they die in this round, then they won't have anything while the rest of the team can buy. So they're going to have sort of a, a, you know, a desynchronized economy, which is not that cool. NIP, on the other hand, finally able to breathe a bit of a sigh of relief here. Should be able to get a fifth round on the board as well, unless they run into Simple or uh, Blade. Markolov going down already, and Freiburg able to spray down Blade. So that's one of the rifles gone, and now just Simple left. And with this much time left, NIP should be able to hunt him. Yeah, and Bondix actually still alive outside Monster as well, but he doesn't have the gun, so Simple's basically just going to hold the angles, make sure no one can push on top of him. And Bondic, should they drive through that smoke, will just be waiting with the P250. But as we can see, Simple's already shying away from the duel. Because if he can keep that round gun a little bit longer, that another round longer into the last and final round of the first half, it would just be that much less that they have to spend and more utilities they can bring back out. Because they are that low, that's the weird thing, is Get Right's going to find Bonnick. So interesting that they tried to man up on this as Bonnick tried to get in toward the site. Uh, Molotovs as well, Simple just being uh, essentially trapped in this corner. And they're also wrapping around from the other side. 35 seconds, I don't see Simple making it out. He shouldn't be allowed to live with this AWP at all. And the no-scope going to happen, but it doesn't really matter. No problem at all. Good round for NIP. And a 5-9 to nine score line moving into the last of the half. I mean... At this rate, it's actually a pretty good job from NIP that they are uh, that they're keeping this alive. I mean, if they hit nine six here, this is a great comeback. This is this is a really good job to them to turn it around. Remember, they took the tactical pause when it was six to one, and it went to nine two. So for them to win up the half, this is really giving them a chance. And we saw them get this sort of momentum going on Mirage second half. Like you said, they could make this nine nine after winning a pistol in round, like half in, in the second half, which would just be. A heads-up game from that point, and they line it up. Forrest has stepped up massively in these rounds. His impact frags, his early kills and getting information has been crucial for the fact that they're being able to pull back. One HP he escapes with, but he's already taken down two, and they know that the A presence was there. I mean, on that A side of the map, NIP seem to be coming away with uh, some much better rounds once they're able to fight away from the bomb site. It seems like whenever, whenever Flipside are able to fight on the bomb site, they just have better angles, and they have also the added advantage of having the bomb down, but... NIP shutting them down before it gets that far, and now it's Bondig and Markolov left. Do you remember what my, the line was at SLTV? If you give up toilets, your A site goes to shit. You have to be able to control it. It's absolutely imperative, and Moses and I talked about this as well. There's just, with the current version of that bomb site and the default plant that you were talking about, no one really has the counter for it yet. So you have to take the fight. You have to get forward to the site, even just to get the information and get the rotations over early enough to recover. Yeah, make that terrorist side spend a little bit of time as well, because they're going to be worried when they do try and take it. If you've already shown yourself there, then they're not going to be as quick. So that's definitely true as well, and a good line. Bondic trying to see if he can push out, but there was a crossfire, so he instantly goes down. And Markolov, last round here of the half, and in a 1v5. Don't think this is going to be working out. Yeah, highly unlikely. Let's see what magic he's got up his sleeve, though. It does take down Exist. Bomb plant for money, because clearly they'll take that into the next round. So I love that he <laughs> even goes for it. But didn't matter, didn't have time. If he was going to make something magical happen, he had to place it. It's going to be 6-9. to nine. Not a bad comeback from NIP, but flip side still a really impressive half. Yeah, I mean, nine rounds is pretty damn good at this point in time. I think, I mean, there might be a lingering sense of, you know, disappointment. That's when you got to hope that flip side here have some pretty good leadership and they will say, look, forget about the fact that we want to lost a bunch of rounds at the end of this half. Overall, we still did super well, so uh, let's just keep going. If they win the pistol, and I mean, we already seen what Simple can do with the USPS. We saw that on Mirage. 
and it was scary. So if he sees a couple of NIP members and are able to take them down long range, think about the, I mean, if NIP rush B right now, they do have smoke and two flashbangs, then they might be able to close the distance on the USPS. But if they go long, and they are going long indeed, and Flipside are able to counter them here, this might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, they could definitely counter them here. If they work out of these stairwell right now, and they have Markalov, rather, excuse me, Bondic sliding over in connector. Now Bondic going down, they can get away from this easy. Even if they come up and try and go for the flank, they can just work out toward A long, but they catch the bomb going across. Hiko getting that kill on Freiburg. True to the name of Freiburg and the sponsorship, that is crucial because they have to go back to recover that, and Alu manages to do so without being spotted up. That is also a bit of a win right there for NIP because that could have got a lot worse. And look at this rotation from Flipside. They just run back all the way up to the A bomb site. They expect that NIP having picked up the bomb are going to just rush to A because they know there are two people on the stairwell. Instead, actually, NIP are going back towards the B bomb site. So I'm not sure who's reading who right now, but it's working out in favor of NIP. Forest looking for an opening, and that's going to make Flipside think that something's definitely happening here. They're almost all rotated out. Only Hiko, I think, is staying behind in that B-bomb side, and he's going to be very thankful that he is in just a couple of seconds. They might be hitting it, and that's when they it. need him. He hears it. Hiko hears them running as well. If he can get the shot crossing over, Markolov is there, and he catches Alu mid -air. That drops the bomb, and now Get Right has taken a long-range fight, and Hiko will shut down Get Right, and it's going to be Forrest left. You know, 1v4. This is a disaster. Yeah, the prediction for your 9-9 now no longer exists. It's double digits already for flip side. And there it is. Simple concludes it. It's going to be 6 to 10. And Flipside now have the momentum. They've got the economy. They've got the last map in the bag. This is a massive step back from, uh, from where we were in front of I mean, this, this is a huge turnaround. I actually think it was a great idea for, uh, for Flipside to rotate all those people back to A. But then the added detail of having Hiko stay around. And he, because they started running when they came out of Connector, he heard that and was able to make the call. Markolov got a great shot on Alu. And now he's going to finish the round. Moving into the 17th round here, it's Tech Nine Armor and NIP. They know what time it is. It's time to step it up, or they're going to be going home. Knocked out of ESWC by Flipside with Hiko. Yeah, I mean, that's... Wouldn't that be quite a story? I mean, that just adds <laughs> to the compounding stories that are piling against Nip so far this year. Unfortunately, as Simple will take down Exist, Simple will take down Get Right. How many more can he get? Alu's the next to the line, and Simple gets him as well. Look for the ace. There's four. Gets traded eventually by Freiburg, but it's guns, 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 baby. Only the pistol left for Freiburg. I'm not likely going to do much with it, so what, what possibly can be in the recovery now for Nip? How can this possibly come back in their favor? And I'm, I mean, you go back to that CT side, and again, you look at TSM, you look at Fnatic, you look at Na'Vi, you look at the teams who are playing this map with the most success right now, and it's all with aggressive A's, and they started off that half struggling so massively by stacking up B, it was a change in pace entirely. Now that may be a read they had on flip side, but it definitely didn't work out at all. I mean, if NIP don't win that one eco round that they did, this, this whole picture could be different as well. It could be flip side now up at like 13, 14 rounds instead. I don't know. This this NIP team was looking so incredibly solid on Inferno that I was starting to, you know, get a little bit hopeful. I thought, all right, maybe a return to some of the some of the you know the core values for NIP and some of the stuff that they traditionally have been quite good at, but this is definitely looking a bit scary. Freiburg trying to get in here, but Markolov will quickly shot him down. The ball making its way over A long, and they are going to be spotted by Simple over there in just a couple of seconds. Alu looking to try and get a better angle to fire inside A. But if he makes it that jump another time, Simple's already staring, and Simple's going to have spotted that. So he doesn't even need to shoot. He knows he's there. He's got the information. Now he's in the open. Alu will counter it back. He realizes, uh-oh, I've got problems. It's an M4, and Forrest is the one who has to deal with those problems first as Simple changes his angle over to get right. He's going to get him, and he pops back out. It's Alu down. Simple when he gets going. I mean, this is the thing. The first map, he was nowhere to be seen. The last two, he's definitely been on. 18 kills. He leads the way right now. 15 for Markolov, which is pretty solid sign from him, and Hiko's not far behind either. I mean, seven of those kills have been in the last two rounds, so he's got a couple of really good eco frag rounds here, but it's still great. You're absolutely right. Uh, he's really stepped it up, and there we go. AKs all around for the NIP team, but flips out of doubling the round score of NIP, and they're starting to get very tricky. They're trying to be fast down towards that B-bomb side at the moment, but they do slow it down once they reach uh, the pipelines, and we're going to see if they can make this round work. They kind of need to win this round, otherwise it might be all over.
Oh, they have to win this round. They have to win this first gun because it would have been a pistol and another first gun lost. And now it's going to be all on the action as Eagle picks up two, but it's Freiburg coming in to counter it back. And NIP give themselves a bit of a chance here by having the man advantage trying to get this bomb down, but it's not yet in position to get right. He gives them one more, but Bondic brings it back and Bondic has the smoke. It's Alu by himself, who, by the way, only has four kills going into this round and it's another death for him, but get right's there to save it. And thank God he does because, like you said, could have been all over had he not been there. Yeah, that was very, very tricky, and Get right showing up at the right time there, so very, very important kill. Alu has had a really tough game here on Overpass. Four kills as we reach the 20th round. I mean, a stark difference to what he was like on Inferno, and um, trying to do his best on Mirage as well, but this is a, yeah, it's a tough game right now for NIP in, t in general. They do make it work, though. Flip side, not going to be deterred. They will buy up anyway. Simple being very aggressive, taking down Alu. Yeah. Not his game, is it? And he also sees that there's no one else over there. So even though they fall back, it means now NIP have got to be really worried. Because this is going to open the doorway. So another potential look onto this B side. A man down on entry this time. So they have to hit the first shot. If they go down to three versus five, even if it's a back and forth exchange inside the site, it just means that the rotation getting there will be so much overwhelming for them. And that's not going to be anywhere near the case as Nihilum. From Hiko standing in for flip side. I keep wanting to say Nihilum every time I see his name. He's going to pick up the double. And it's uh, Forrest left in a one on two with Get Right. I mean, it's the guy you would want with you as Forrest gets the first looking for more. Get Right's there, and now they've got themselves a chance. But as he goes for the reload, Markalov's already made his position known on the right side. He gets back into it, so Get Right has a one on two. He knows they're pushing from either side, and unfortunately, he's overwhelmed. I'll be honest, Sadikist, I've almost, I've almost said Nihilum at least 10 times in this best of three. I, I really, really, I'm just on the edge of doing it. <clears throat> at all side. Uh, the fact that his flip side could have won this round much quicker. Um, that, that 2v4 shouldn't have got that close at all. Um, they, they should have waited for the bomb plant. Because if you're in a 2v4 and the terrorist only have two left and one of them is putting down the bomb, you're essentially playing a 4v1 at that point in time as long as the bomb is being planted. So just wait for that to happen, then go for the, for the retake just as they spring it on you. So um, yeah, a bit, of a, a bit of a sketchy round for flip side, honestly. I think they, they gave away more than they needed to, but they win it anyway, and that's obviously the important part, especially as NIP don't get the bomb plant and don't have the money to buy here. We're moving into the 21st round, and flip side three rounds away from knocking out NIP. Bondic flash over. Simple's there, though. This guy is on fire right now, controlling everything as Bondic's going to think now get right. They're going to be this much closer to 14. And flip side, what an impressive performance. Not done just yet, but Alu last that's left in this particular round, and he's done. He's down and out. Nip, man, oh man. Heads have got to be scratching back there in the player section right now. They have to force up here, even though they don't have that good of a buy going on. Two AKs, three Galils, and a single smoke. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Flip side, on the other hand, the economy is not great, but at least they have the AWP and a lot more grenades to work with. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is definitely a cause for concern, I would say, on for NIP. No question. As a flash goes out, just to make sure no one's lurked into the stairwell and allow existence to take that part of the map. So at least they've got the rotation point now covered off. They can give themselves some options. Bomb, as we saw, dropped all the way back on top of the ladder. But Simple has his off, and he's looking pretty comfortable, looking pretty confident to go for that peek out toward Monster. So three inside B, no aggressive play right now from Flipside. Why would they? There's no need for them to overextend right now and give away guns. They know they're going to be back up for NIP. They haven't necessarily built a massive bank early in this half. So this is, this is very conservative from Blade. Yeah, I don't mind them playing this round like this at all. I think they can guess that the NIP economy is going to be fairly bad, so they're not going to be facing, you know, four Molotovs or anything else like that. Forrester actually manages to find an opening in spite of... Uh, the lack of equipment there and taking down Bondic. So that's going to give them a bit more to work with. The last flashbang here on NIP, and it had better be a good one. Two people offending inside are Hiko and Blade, and they're going to try and see if they can put up a defense here. 30 seconds left, and they almost catch Markolov, who has also shown up uh, with that uh, grenade in hand. Simple going down, and Markolov to fall. Finally, Hiko replying, but he gets sprayed down by Freiburg. And a great round coming out here from NIP. Forrest taking out Blade. And that was right at the edge. That if was they lose this round, they lose this game. And that was Forrest just playing a really solid solo rollover on the A side. Got that opening kill we saw, and then stuck around. He actually rotated back through the connection in bathrooms and just came up late. They couldn't rotate away, and then as soon as they had the information that they were on B, it was too late. He, or, uh, excuse me, Forrest had already got those two kills. So it just made the job that much easier for yeah. his teammates. Just so much easier for them to come into the site. So 
Alu this time sticking with the rifle. Again, it's better off game for him. There's not the confidence necessarily to go for the op as he looks out toward. But look at this double long presence right now. Simple has the op. Nice shot from Alu looking for more. Has Bondic tries to go for the refrag. And Alu not even going to give him the chance. He's just going to fall back, readdress the situation, and go for a repeat on Bondic. And now he's going to have the help to do it. But Bondic gets him on top of the rock. Now it's all on IP. Really well done from them to get into position as Get Right wins bathroom. And Forrest wins back out at long. They get the last player as well. Blade goes down. And now they've got the economy broken. But they've still only got a buffer of two rounds. One round, ultimately. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not exactly cause for celebration, but it's definitely a step in the right direction here. And also a team ace. And someone was tweeting at me earlier saying, what the hell is a team ace? It just means everyone picked up a kill each year. I think it's kind of an old term at this point, but, you know, we, we try and use it every once in a while. Simple with the AWP pushing very aggressively into Connector. Going to try and see if he can get the quick scope on someone. He gets the kill, but Freiburg is there to return it with an instant headshot. So favorable trade for an IP. That happened so quickly. Yeah. That was milliseconds between Simple getting the kill and just dying without even picking up one. So not a bad play for him to react that quickly on the initial peak. Blade, he's got the M4. I doubt he'll pick up the AWP. It's highly unlikely that he picks up a dropped AWP, but he's in good position for Freiburg, who's walking directly toward him. But Freiburg goes to that crouch, and he aims directly over top of his head. So Freiburg wins the exchange. Now they've got the man advantage again. And Nips starting to build a bit more momentum. Bondic might get caught in no man's land here. Because he's pushing out with no cover and Alu's just hiding behind the rock. He'll spot him. Does he see him? Does he see him? Four by three. Four no. by three. There's no way he didn't see him on the right side. No way. They walk right past each other. What kind of circus is this? Bondic going to be this walking This might actually favor them. Nip in a weird way. Because they won't get spotted. And okay, this is the problem. Is that he gets on the flank immediately. There is no way to know it. That's the bomb down on Freiburg as well. And Bondic going to run for more. If he gets one more kill here, this will be the most unreal timing of the whole tournament. 28 seconds left. They try and run in here, but the NIP are actually backing off, and that's Alu going down. Bondic flanking two players. Just what the hell is going on? Forrest and Get right now running into the B bomb site, so it's still kind of working out. They're going to get the bomb plant, and Flipside have one kit and one smoke to try and retake this, but they're a man up, but they're fighting Forrest and Get right, the eternal duo, it seems. I, I could only speculate that that's 4x3. I'm not sure what Alu's config is, but how, I mean, how do you not see that? Unless he's like adjusting something meanwhile while he was hiding behind the rock. That's insane. Maybe like 16x1. He only has like a huge block in the middle. You can see anything on Forest here. Spraying down, takes one. Hiko going down, but Bondic with a refrag. And now Get Right is alone and smoked out of position here as well. Markov has the kit. He's going to be on it and Get Right. He's hearing it, but he's not getting the angle right. It's being diffused in the background, and there it is. The round for Flipside. Just couldn't do anything, and that's going to be match and map point here. Flipside, a single round away from taking out NIP. And, I mean, that that's round, incredible. we're going to be seeing that round a lot. Yeah, there's, there's going to be some people that are going to bring that up multiple times. That round could have been shifted massively at Alu. Just looked to his right, got that kill. Bondic's not in position to pick up two. And it's pretty much all over at that point. And he, now we're sitting on 14-10. He, he definitely couldn't see it, and... I mean, what could he do? He had a great position. It was very unlikely that someone was going to sneak in from that particular angle. Forrest opening up this round on Markolov. Play with a good return, but he gets sprayed down in return by Exist. And it's going to be a 4v3 here. Plenty of time for NIP. They're going to get the Molotov to block off it. Anyone trying to come in, but Simple showing up. Oh, sorry, Hiko showing up with a really good kill, but it's still not going to be enough here. Exist with a double get right with one of them. And now it's a 15 to 10 scoreline. NIP are gunning for that overtime. Broken bank right now too, so they have a chance here to pick up one more, make their job that much easier. But they're not going to panic on flip sides. Team, they know the pressure's off them. They, they came into this with like, Hiko, do what you want mentality. And second out of the group, we saw World, or World Edit, excuse me, the player's not here. We saw Blade in the interview earlier today say, we wanted to win our group, we didn't. But we can still win this best of three. And, well, they're definitely proving it. Exist is looking out toward Long. Bondic's going to slide in through the bathrooms with only that pistol. So NIP need not get over aggressive here and get caught off, give up a gun for free. They're all holding hands right now. It's a decent buddy system, and they're going to push out toward Long. With Bondic getting away from this, he might just stay alive simply from the fact the timing as he gets back down the front of the A site. There seems to be some sort of uh, meta developing here where as soon as you think the other team is going to be echoing or at least not be fully bought up, you're going to go along with the most of your teammates. I kind of like that idea. Uh, Markolov is sneaking up behind somewhere with, uh, with the USPS in hand, going to be walking in to get right, who instantly takes him out. So uh, kind of a good idea to try and get that look happening. Interesting and shift too. I hope that Flipside is going to play one of these upcoming rounds really aggressively, like try and put the pressure on NIP. 
Yeah, don't give them any room. What, I mean, you, you, they've got a few rounds to experiment with here. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of how TSM won their first championship against Fnatic. They had an eco. They didn't, Fnatic didn't know it was an eco. They just said, oh, we're going to take away the exchange. But now it's Nip's turn to come into the site. And Simple's waiting with the Deagle. And he's a threat with every weapon as he takes down the first kill. Still looking for more. And Forrest gets dropped. That's the bomb. Things looking very good. As Simple single-handedly is going to take down three on the way through. And it's get right to recover. And now it's just left the Bondic. But that could have been an absolute disaster. Yeah, 10 seconds here, so they're going to get the bomb planted. I don't think Bondic can stop it. If he walks in and gets the kill on the guy putting the bomb down, that's going to be ridiculous. The flashbang is pretty well timed as well, and the bomb goes down, so that should be the end of the round. Bondic drops, but what a ridiculous round from Simple. I mean, if he just a little bit of backup there, that could have probably been the end of the game. And that should, I mean, again, that's going to get NIP worried. This Very is a round where they should just be able to, you know, man up and take him out easily. And I mean, look... The money's still, it's still down low, so it's forced back to another eco for F3. Yeah. This is this is a little bit positive for NIP, but the next round for sure, they're going to have guns back out. Nade up early for Exist, a little bit of spam to make sure Simple doesn't come around the corner, but look at how he's stacked and how he's positioned. He has that Deagle again. Yeah, he's going to want to look for it, but this time it's not going to work out. He got a body shot in, still does a hell of a lot of damage, but not going to be the kill. Bondic, dry firing into the wall for no real reason. And... Um, yeah, 15-12, very likely scoreline here. But then Flipside will have a lot of money to work with. Yeah, and that gets scary. NIP now giving up more rounds in the last two games than pretty much all their other games combined. It's pretty remarkable for Flipside to be in this position, and they're going to look out toward long this time, but look at the positional change right now. They've actually got a player getting very aggressive toward them. Luckily, Exist spots him coming. That was Blade. And now they've got an A site that's open for at least the moment. They are rotating Markalov over. He goes not far from him as he gets in position at Dumpster, but they've already got Fiverr deep inside the site, so no position to be made at Optimus Prime, and there it is. Exist will close it out. It's going to be 15-12, and NIP still have a lot of work to do. And there it is, simple, straight to the op. Yeah, Hiko, I'm going to go for the M4, and Blade should be picking up an M4 of his zone as well. The problem here is that there's Molotovs and everything else as well. And if they get just one opening frag here, flip side, can NIP stand it? They have the mental fortitude here to continue to fight. They just need three more rounds. And we could be seeing overtime. And then it's probably going to be anybody's game. Alu smoked off, and they're going to cross on over and put one guy, that's Hiko, playing all the way towards the ledge there. There's the smokes out initially. On the B site, no one pushing through stairwell. Freiburg's still just looking at the doorway to make sure that's the case, but this will give Nip a bit more breathing space to set up this execution. Smoke out on Monster, though. That means Alu has to wait. And Simple's a long way away from this B site. He's all the way over on A. It's actually a bit of a rotation as he, he looks toward window now, but it's actually still favoring this B take. Meanwhile, Nip's thinking better of it. And Bondic's going to be passive in this corner. This corner often gets overlooked. That's not like the corner out at long where you flash in, you instantly check it with the second man. That corner can actually almost guarantee a trade in most cases. Especially if the people on A-bomb side are going to be playing aggressively, so they'll be taking up uh, all the attention. Exist failing oh. that Molotov, otherwise that would have been perfect, and Bondic would have probably been forced to run into the AK spray, so it's a great idea, but the execution of it definitely wasn't there. And now 30 seconds as they try and make their way into this B-bomb site. Hiko's here with an HG grenade, You're going to be over towards uh, the sandbags and drops Forrest down to nearly half health as well. 20 seconds as they try and push in and back up is here. All of Flipside coming in. This is do or die time for NIP. If they win this round, they might get that overtime. Otherwise, they're going to be out of the tournament. Forrest gets down. Blade with the kill. Blade with the double bond. Nick picks up one. It's a 2v3 now. And Freiburg can get right trying to hold on. And it's going to be all on Freiburg here. They've got no grenades to sold him out with. So he's got the angle for it. Going to walk in and take down Markolov. No defuse this time. Freiburg still hiding in the corner. He goes for the spray, but he goes down to Simple and look at that flip side. They make the semifinals of ESWC. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. Is this not happening? Wait. Did he like go to cheer and just lose? Okay, he oh. got it. I was like, did he like go to high five his teammate? I was watching his hand because I was thinking they're cheering before that's up, but luckily they had the composure and a stunned NIP. What a job from flip side. Normally, it'd be quite upsetting to have the camera switch before the round is over, but this time we got... That was actually, yeah, that added some intensity to it. Oh, I was wondering for a second as well. All right, then. And Blade, when he came over top of Plywood, there was a real chance that he was going to get taken down. I think it was Freiburg who had the angle. Yeah. And he shot just to the right of his head, and then it was just, boom, down. He was out of it. And, like, what can you do in a three-on-one? 
Very, very tricky situation. That means NIP will not be moving forward, and Flipside instead are going to be in the semifinals, facing either Na'Vi or Renegades, depending on who wins that next quarterfinals. That is coming up uh, right after um, uh, right after this. Wow. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is this is the upset of the tournament. Here we go. I mean, the best of ones were not actually that crazy this time, and it's the best of three that turns out to be insane. Specifically, more so, uh, it, it adds to the whole storyline that it was 16-1 on Inferno for NIP. Yeah, hard to believe, really, isn't it? But um, very well played on uh, on Flipside's part. Some some great individual showings, uh, but also kind of impressive that they managed to make it work with Hiko in the lineup here. I mean, lack of communication still still apparently good enough. And and the weird thing is he's playing like that role that like is like do what you want. And yeah. like a lot of teams try and let players do that, and then they like thwart them away from it. But it, I mean, it's working for them. That's the crazy thing. And yeah. maybe it's something that could be countered if they learned it over, like over time. But right now, it's just catching people off guard. Yeah, and uh, we're going to go to a bit of, a, of an interview. I'm curious to see if they can get someone from NIP to do it. Maybe it's going to be Nato once again. But either way, Semler's going to be ready on stage. So take it away. Thank you very much, Anders. So we, after that huge win by Flipside, are now going to get to hear from Blade, the in-game leader. So already, congratulations, Blade, seriously. So going into this match right now, initial impressions after a win like that over NIP. Incredible, man. Uh, we knew that we, that we can win, but uh, we lost like 16-1, no, 16-2 on the Inferno, and we like, oh, it will be hard to win, but uh, I think all players step up like on maximum level. Well, what, what happened on Mirage? Because that was the thing. We were all wondering, you take a 16-1 beating on Inferno, but then you come into Mirage and all of a sudden you just look like this completely different team. You completely steamroll NIP. What, what happened there to allow you to pick up that win? Uh, Inferno is not like our best map. In Mirage is like one of the two of our best maps. So we knew that our city side could actually, I think that NAP is playing bad this map. That's why we picked it. So their T side was so predictable, and we, I almost knew all things they're doing, you know, their rotations and uh, like their smoke, four smokes from slope, something like that. So. It was, I think it was a little bit easy, but overpass, we knew that this map was uh, not so good as other maps, but I think it's a mistake from them because they removed cash at the end and we played overpass. And going into overpass then, once you've managed to tie it up, did you start to feel like perhaps this is possible or were you still trying to keep, uh, keep everybody cool, level-headed, uh, that there's still a lot of work to be done? We won some overpasses uh, like past uh, months, I think, and we won TSM on it. We, are like, we knew that if we will play like on maximum level, if each guy will like take all clutch, and uh, each clutch, if we will step up in all clutches, we'll, we can win. And actually, we did it. All, all clutches was like I don't, I don't know, like seven of ten, we won it. And then uh, yeah, of course, like there's already I think James Bondick basically, you know, you know. So we've got all sorts of uh, big things coming out of this. But we're gonna go ahead and let you go um, join your team once again. So thank you very much for taking the time for the interview. And uh, congratulations to moving on to the semifinals here at ESWC. Now we get to hear from NIP what, uh, what's been going to be going through their heads after a loss like this. So Natu, the coach for NIP, Natu. So already first impressions after that best of three, and then we can go into the maps. Um, too early to say. I mean, it's right out of the map, so, or match, so too much adrenaline going on to be uh, too rational. <laughs> Um, I mean, we've lost the wrong battles, all of them. Like, like that first map was good, then everything else, we, we kept losing on the wrong rounds, kept losing the wrong, wrong battles, putting ourselves in the wrong situations. And so, um, how much input are you giving to the team live during the match in those kinds of situations? Are you speaking up a lot, or are you trying to let exist and the rest of them work it out for themselves? For the most part, I give them the room to do their thing. Because, but uh, it really depends, varies on the situation, what's going on and stuff like that. I can't really dictate battles within a round and stuff like that. That's not something I can really have any effect on, so that's up to everyone and how they read situations. Um, it comes more to the bigger picture. But um, when we put ourselves in those situations, it doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really matter anymore. It's, it's going to become really that much harder so going out of this, what, what have you taken away from this best of three, essentially? What's going to be the prime thing that you're going to be looking at uh, going into the next tournament? Like I said, it's very early to say, to be honest with you. Um, got to sit down, look everything through, um, talk together. Um, I mean, 
I don't know. Mirage, for example, he said we were too predictable. I don't know. I mean, we, we had a certain game plan we wanted to follow. Um, there's also obviously certain tendencies there are. I think he, he was maybe being too, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say we were too predictable. We had certain things we, we specifically wanted to do. It just didn't work out. Like end, I think it came down to the end round stuff that just didn't work. We were not um, picking up those, and that's just how we how it didn't turn up and too big of a mountain to climb on on the first second half. Similar to overpass as well. So I mean, were you comfortable with overpass as a map to close things out on? Yeah, sure. No, no problem at all. I mean, we've we've had some good good overpasses. We've had bad ones as well. But I mean. Um, no, it, it wasn't a problem at all. All right, well, thank you very much for taking the time for the interview, man. And uh, we'll see you next week at the next event. So, uh, guys, now uh, we're going to go ahead and um, that's right, actually. So if you're here live at the event, don't walk out, don't go get food. you got to meet the winners first. Flipside are going to be going for a signing thing right here at the left of the stage. So be sure, you know, if you guys want to go ahead, take some pictures with Simple. You know, get his autograph. Eco2 is here. So uh, they're going to be right here to the left of the stage. But for the stream, we're going to be taking a break as we wait for the teams to set up for the last quarterfinal match of the day. That's going to be Navi versus the Australian team, Renegades. So you don't want to miss that. That's going to be in, what, like 20, 20 minutes, give or take. So this is a predictable break. Go get some food.